At the Northlands Coliseum last spring, words were hard to come by when the Edmonton Oilers shocked the hockey world and the four-time defending Stanley Cup champion New York Islanders. Just five years earlier, the Oilers became one of four franchises admitted to the NHL from the capsized World Hockey Association. Last season, they set National Hockey League statistics on fire with a myriad of team and individual records, 18 in all, a performance that'll be hard to duplicate. Yet, if it can be done, this year's Edmonton Oilers have the right ingredients to give it a shot. The outpouring of affection by their city was overwhelming as Wayne Gretzky and his Oiler teammates rode like royalty through the streets of Edmonton. But now, as the season unfolds, the Oilers find themselves under the microscope. The questions will be raised, the opinions will be voiced and written, and the analysis will begin. So tonight from the Metropolitan Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Edmonton Oilers meet the Minnesota North Stars for the first time since their Campbell Conference battle last season. It's next on USA. The NHL on USA is brought to you by Stroh's and Strolite, fire brewed for smoother taste. By Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1984, Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. By Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline, Mobile Super Unleaded, it's really powerful. And by Levi's, jeans, cords, and shirts. For quality and style, you can count on. Last week in Boston, it was sunny and 75 degrees. A little difficult to get into a hockey mood. But this week, it's rainy and chilly in Minneapolis, St. Paul, and we are back in the swing of things. Good evening, everybody. I'm Al Troutwig. Welcome to week two of the NHL on USA. It's the Minnesota North Stars and the Edmonton Oilers. And already in this young NHL season, some trends are beginning to develop. A trend that the Oilers will pick up right where they left off. Check this out. 23 goals for seven against and they are undefeated meanwhile the minnesota north stars usually explosive only six goals for three against yet their record is two and one on a recent east coast swing the minnesota north stars look good and you can bet tonight that they'll be thinking of revenge following their almost embarrassing defeat in the conference finals at the hands of edmonton last spring to the cheers of restaurateurs around the nhl dan kelly is back with us tonight he's up in the booth with gary green dan Thank you, Al Troutwick. Nice to be with you and Gary Green again. Gary, the Minnesota North Stars, three games, only three goals against. Is it a fantastic new defense, or is it sensational goaltending by Don Beaupre? I think whenever you allow less than one goal per game, Dan, you've got to have a combination of both, both excellent goaltending and some strong defensive efforts by both your forwards and your defensemen. Bill Mahoney has finally convinced these guys, I think, that winning right now is going to mean an awful lot to them, and if they play well defensively, they're going to win more games, especially against a team like Edmonton. They're not going to outscore them, so they've got to keep them off the scoreboard as much as possible. Maybe it's working, but this is only their fourth game of the season, so maybe tonight will tell some things. Meanwhile, if you want to test your defense, play the Edmonton Oilers. They've scored, as Al Trudwig mentioned, 23 goals. That's almost six goals a game in their first four games. They're undefeated. They've added a little new offensive punch. Mike Krushelniski has come over from the Boston Bruins. And as well, I think the Oilers are playing sounder defense in the earlier part of the season. There'll be a handful, Al Trubwick. Okay, Dan, we'll be back to Dan and Gary for the start of the first period in just a couple of minutes. It's the Minnesota North Stars from the Norris Division. They were the best last year. And the Edmonton Oilers from the Smythe. They were the best in the National Hockey League. All that as we welcome you to week two of the NHL on USA. We're live at the Met Center in Bloomington. The first period coming up in a moment. Which of these oils gives you the best engine protection under the toughest driving conditions, sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one, Mobile One. 
Now, Mobile One and our other fine motor oils come in this easy pour resealable plastic container. Mobile motor oil. Now it's easier to use than ever. So hold up! Go on! Lighten the load! Lighten the load! Go down the trunk! They're catching up! Get rid of the strobes! Get rid of the strobes! Good thinking, Bart. Yep. Stroh's and Stroh Light. Fire brewed for smoother taste. We're back live at the Met Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the home of the defending Norris Division champion Minnesota North Stars. Gary, the number one thing on Minnesota's mind, no doubt going into this game, the fact they were swept in four straight games in the Campbell Conference Final by this Edmonton team last spring. That's something you don't forget too quickly. You can't forget it, especially when it's a, a long summer. I think the thing that hurt the most was when they had that 5-2 to two lead at one point in game number three, and yet against this strong, offensive-minded Edmonton Oilers, they lost the game 7-5. to five. That one stung the most, but yet it's a brand new season. What happened last year is in the past. And so the Minnesota North Stars, even though they won two exhibition games, are out against, against this Edmonton Oilers. Doesn't really mean anything. The season starts fresh. Tonight in the NHL, other games. Detroit plays at Hartford. It is Los Angeles at Montreal and Vancouver at Philadelphia. All those games are underway and we'll be following the action in Hartford, Montreal, and Philadelphia here on USA as this game goes along. So the Edmonton Oilers, Gary, I've uh, seen them once already, and they look very good, and they look like they have just picked up where they left off last year and perhaps have a little more confidence, maybe even cockiness going into this season. I think those Stanley Cup rings they're wearing has a lot to do with that. Just awaiting the playing of the national anthems here at the... Met center. Edmonton with four games played, three wins, no losses, one tie. They're in first place in the Smythe division, one point ahead of the second place Calgary Flames. Minnesota is in a four way tie in the early Norris division standings. There's the man who leads the Oilers, Glenn Sather, the general manager and coach, and the recent man who guided Team Canada to the Canada Cup victory. So Glenn Sather really making his mark felt in the hockey world in the last six months. A Stanley Cup and a Canada Cup victory to his credit. Well, you have to give him a great deal of credit, Dan, what he has done with this young Oiler team right from their inaugural debut into the NHL. He's brought them along very quickly. Now, here at the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the National Anthems featuring Jim Bowers. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, through patriot love in all thy sons command, with glowing hearts we see thee right, the true north strong and free, from far And now, fans, if you'll remain standing for our national anthem, the North Stars are pleased tonight to showcase one of country music's top performers. We'll be performing two shows nightly, beginning tonight through Saturday at the Carlin Celebrity Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grammy Award-winning Larry Catlin. Oh, say, can 
And you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave larry gatlin larry gatlin with the star spangled banner here prior to this game in minnesota the officials tonight the referee the man in the middle with a red stripe on either arm Dennis Morell, a linesman. On the left of your screen, Ryan Bozak. On the right, a newcomer, Mark Vines. The start. The starting goaltenders for the owners, Grant Fuhr. Third game of the year. He's had one win and one tie, a 1.92 goals against average. Don Beaupre at the other end for Minnesota. Three games, two wins and one loss, and an average of, get this, .968. That's less than one goal a game, and you can't do it much better than that. <laughs> no, you certainly can't, Dan. And remember, too, the very first game of the North Stars this year when they played the Toronto Maple Leafs, they lost in overtime, but you don't hear of too many one nothing hockey games in this day and age in the NHL. Con Smythe Trophy winner last spring, Mark Messier. And we're underway as Messier gets it into the Minnesota zone. The North Stars clear at the center. Racing after it was Neil Broughton, now stolen by Solheim. His shot blocked in front of the net by Kevin Lowe, and the Oilers come back. Messier, number 11. Taken out of the play, gets the puck into the corner. Now, Roberts for Minnesota, getting it behind his own goal, and Broughton, number 7, out of the University of Minnesota, back to Gord Roberts. Number 10, Gord Roberts. Fires it up the middle to center ice, picked up by Broughton. Now Solheim, number 31, on left wing. Solheim ridden out of the play by Lowe and Lee Fogelin for Edmonton clears the center. Robert says it's there to Dino Cicerelli. Head manning it to Keith Acton. Couldn't get around the defense. Now Acton all alone. Backhander over top of the net as he was set up by Solheim. Here's Messier trying to clear it up. Bellows and Messier fight for it. And now the Oilers do clear at the center. Dave Hunter shooting it into the center ice area, and then it's dumped in by Willie Lindstrom. Going back to get it. A newcomer to Edmonton this year, Harold Snaps. Cleared to the Edmonton line and going back to get it. The newcomer, Sherbin for Edmonton. He's number eight. Feeds in on right way. Broken up at the blue line. And back comes Acton for Minnesota. Centers one to McCarthy. Broken up, and the Oilers come right back. Trying to work it in is Keith or Kevin McClellan to shot. Volpre the save. And Acton then flips it away. Bellows clears it to center. Picked up there by McCarthy, number 11. Don McCarthy centers one. Nobody there. Don Jackson, back of his own goal, comes up with it. Number 29. Ahead now to Hunter, number 12. Long shot, nowhere near the net. And Harold Snaps, number 28. The former Vancouver Canuck got up to center, broken up, and Gretzky has a break on right wing. He scores! Gretzky went to his backhand and made a great deep to pull Don Beaupre. You give him an inch and he'll take a mile. You talk about the great defensive strategies the Minnesota North Stars have set up. They didn't plan on this one by any stretch of the imagination. Harold Snaps gave up the puck. Wrong guy to give it up to. Here comes Gretzky. What a move he makes here on Beaupre. Goes to his backhand. But again, the key to the goal, Gretzky stealing the puck away from Harold Snaps just over the North Stars' blue line. That's where it all happened. 
You might know that Gretzky puts the puck in the net, even though he's not great, Dan, usually on breakaways. It was actually Yerry Curry who knocked the puck away from Snaps, and it went to Gretzky, and he walked in alone and gets his fourth goal of the year. Here's Yerry Curry to copy back to Curry number 17. Now ahead to Krusil Niski. He flips it in, and Lawton is back for Minnesota. Brian Lawton, number 98, can't get it out of the zone. Now Giles trying to work it free from underneath an Edmonton player who has fallen on top of the puck, and we get a stoppage in play. For our local systems, we'll pause here. USA Sports is bringing you the National Hockey League. The USA Network presents a special event, Evita Peron, the true story of a woman's willful struggle to be somebody, no matter what. She loved one man. If you do what I say, no man in Argentina would touch you. She seduced a nation. I have a terrible longing to leave something behind. James Tarantino stars with Faye Dunaway as Evita Peron, a special two-part USA premiere event at 8 p.m. Eastern, October 28th and 29th. Play is just underway, and the Oilers on the attack again. Crucial Niski in with Gretzky and Curry, but broken up and shot away by Minnesota. And the Oilers have to go back. Paul Coffey, number seven for Edmonton. Long pass to Gretzky. Drops it to Crucial Niski. Now to Yerry Curry, but knocked away at the Minnesota line. Back comes Mark Napier. Long shot. Grant Pure a glove save. Pure trying to give it to one of his defensemen. They all went different ways. And now Paul Coppy, number seven. One of the outstanding defensemen in the game today. Clears it over. Hartsburg knocking that down, and Snaps has it for Minnesota. Snaps dumping it in. Pure handles the long shot. Kevin Lowell plays the boards. And Gretzky deflected at the center where Snaps has it. Over to Hartsburg. Third one now. Knocked down by Bill Carroll, a former Islander. He's checked, and Cicerelli, number 20, has it for Minnesota. Long shot. Takes off as it goes off a stick and up into the crowd. The scoring play, Edmonton Gretzky, his fourth of the year from Curry, 2-17 of the first period of the time. Bill Mahoney in his second year behind the North Stars bench. Interesting thing that he brought up today in discussions with Bill is that he actually has a contract between coach and player. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. It's between Bill Mahoney and Dino Cicerelli. Faceoff coming up just inside the Edmonton blue line. Billy Carroll out centering. And Semenko clears it to center ice. McCarthy shoots it back in for Minnesota. Number four is Kevin Lowe for the Oilers, right in front of his own goal. Carroll missed it, but no Minnesota player was there to get it. Now McCarthy to Bellow. Buck jumped over his stick. Got back out by Edmonton. Here's Kurt Giles, number two. Giles works in nicely, takes a hit from low, but flipped it into the corner. Fogelin back to get it. Now around on right wing to Pat Hughes, who makes his first start of the season for Edmonton. Into Semenko, broken up in the North Stars come back, led by Giles. Giles centered it, deflected by Bellows, and it went high. Edmonton controlling it, shooting it around in the boards as Carroll held in. Now back of the goal, and Bellows for Minnesota. Back to the point. Fired back into the corner, hits the referee. And the orders come to center with Semenko. He just dumps it in. Number three is the newcomer to Minnesota, Bob Rouse, back to get it. Over onto the left wing side, cleared to center. Now after it is Brent Ashton, number 17 for Minnesota. And Randy Gregg rides him into the boards. And the Oilers try and clear the zone, work it to Glenn Anderson, number nine. Anderson coming to center ice. Anderson with a shot, bounced right in front of the goal, but cleared away by Roberts for Minnesota. Lindstrom for the Oilers, drops it into his own zone to Randy Gregg, to Anderson. Intercepting is Rouse, number three. Bob Rouse for Minnesota. Has difficulty, caught it to the Edmonton line, and Randy Gregg feeds it to Lindstrom. He fell back on Minnesota. Marouf dropping it back. It's returned to Marouf, center to Ashton. Penalty coming up to Edmonton. A high sticking call, and Minnesota will get a power play chance here. The score favors Edmonton one to nothing. We'll return for more right after this. 
If it's luxury, you appreciate. Wait till you see this. The new 1985 Oldsmobile 98 Regency Brougham. It goes beyond the 98 in your mind to the 98 of your dreams. A technical marvel from the tread up. It lets you ride in quiet and splendor. Sophisticated instrumentation, handsome velour fabrics, and the ultimate in luxury, room for six. With furs. There is a special feel in an Oldsmobile. Don Jackson for the Oilers in the penalty box. Two minutes for elbowing was the call. Let's take a look why. There you see it. Ouch. Right on Brian Lawton. Right up around the face area. Jackson taking that penalty. The North Stars on the power play. And from the face off, Hartsburg at the point. Number four, the North Star captain, Craig Hartsburg, into Keith Acton. Now into the corner to Solheim. Drop back, and Messier intercepts. Feeds Gretzky. Gretzky moving in, shoots one. Beaupre made the save. And it's taken now by Broughton for Minnesota. Over to Keith Acton. And center to Bellows. Two line offside pass. And the play is called back, and the faceoff will be just inside the North Star line. Well, the Edmonton Oilers may be killing penalties right now, but watch out. They can score shorthanded goals like no team ever before in NHL history has scored shorthanded goals. 36 last year for an all-time record, and that's a record that even the Oilers may have trouble breaking. North Stars have had some problems on their power play. They're only one for 17 in the three games. They were going to try either Broughton or McCarthy back at the point tonight. They're really missing Maxwell. He's out with an injury. He's been a key man for them in the past on the point. Here is Neil Broughton to Acton number 12. Keith Acton to Hartsburg number four at center. Into Ken Solheim number 31. Solheim. Still controlling the puck. Back to Hartsburg. Centered one off a stick and Fuhrer gives it to Coffey. Coffey picks an opening, fires. Gretzky's onside and has a break. Gretzky in on goal. He scores! Short-handed goal number two of the year for the Oilers. And Gretzky has scored both goals in this game. Edmonton leads two to nothing. You call the shot there, Coach Green. They're just such a dangerous hockey club when they're killing penalties. Take a look. It's way back deep in the end zone. Coffey just knows that Gretzky's going to be up around that red line. He rifles the puck up to him. Gretzky really shows some strength here. Broughton, being tried on the point on the power play, has had some difficulties in trying to defend. What do you do when you're a defenseman on the power play? And you see Gretzky lingering out there. If you go back out there with him, you really ruin your power play opportunities in your own end zone as far as keeping control. Wayne Gretzky's fifth goal of the year is second to this game. Well, Beaupre had given up only three goals in his first three games. He's already given up two to Gretzky and the Oilers here in the first eight minutes of this one. Now Tom McCarthy back for Minnesota. Minnesota, remember, still on the power play. As Lawton gives it to Cicerelli. Back to Brian Lawton. Lawton behind the net, ridden out by Fogelin. Fogelin cleared it. Roberts holding it in to Cicerelli. Back to Roberts to McCarthy. Shot off a stick and up over the glass and into the crowd. There's still 37 seconds remaining on Don Jackson's penalty, but believe me, the mood right here now in this building isn't exactly that of optimism for the Minnesota North Stars on this power play. They've still got a good opportunity right now. Face off just outside of the Edmonton blue line. Here's Gretzky again. You can see number seven, Broughton, right in the middle of your screen, trying to pull Gretzky down as best he could without taking a penalty, but I think at that point in time he might better have hauled Gretzky down, tackled him, whatever, and taken the penalty to even the situation up rather than let Gretzky get a shot away. The scoring play was Gretzky from Coffey and Huddy, a short-handed goal. 7-11 of the first three of the time. North Star still on the power play, but Fogelin flares it away for Edmonton. And Don Bokre setting it up back to the goal for Roberts. Our stars still with the man advantage as Dick handling the center ice. Now into McCarthy as he was given the puck by Lawton. Muir cleared it to Pat Hughes. Now Hughes to Hunter at center ice. Here are the owners with a four on one break. Vogel shoots one. Beaupre the save. And Roberts is there. Now the penalized flare for Edmonton. Jackson is back on. Here's Minnesota. Cicerelli moving in. 
He's checked and back comes Lindstrom with Anderson, a three on one. Drop pass to Messier, in front to Anderson to Lindstrom, missed the open net. Now Lindstrom centers one. Back to the point, shot, Beaupre! Love save on a shot by Randy Gregg. For our local systems, we'll pause here. This is the National Hockey League on USA. The North American Boxing Federation title was vacant when two great A heavyweights stepped into the ring. In one corner, James Broad, 15 wins, one defeat, nine knockouts. In the other corner, Eddie Gregg, 20 wins, no losses, 17 knockouts. Get ready, somebody's going down on USA's Friday Night Boxing at 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Jennifer O'Neill has nothing to fear but fear itself. James Mason also stars in The Flower in His Mouth on the USA Movie at 8 p.m. Eastern Monday. The Oilers lead this game 2 to nothing. They're on the attack again as they usually are. Giles and Glenn Anderson fight for it on the board. Now coming over to help out is Napier. He's pinned in by Don Jackson. Messier is there. And now finally play is tough. Jerry going back to the play previous to the commercial. Well now play is called and we're also going to get a penalty out of this. I thought the play had been stopped a few seconds earlier apparently it had not and we're going to get a penalty meanwhile Gary getting back <laughs> Edmonton shorthanded and they had a four on one break I don't think I've ever seen that before but a team is shorthanded a four on one break <laughs> I've seen it once but it was in practice death Messier gets the penalty and so Minnesota will have a chance I mentioned Beaupre giving up two goals in the first eight minutes of this game. Meanwhile, both were by Gretzky and both were clear-cut breakaways. Looks like Wayne Gretzky is not the least bit tired after a hectic pace during the summer and Canada Cup as well. Here you can see where that penalty was called. Messier is in the box. Did Minnesota North Stars decline, perhaps? Decline the penalty and take a couple of yards. Here's Edmonton on the attack with Hartsburg. Back healthy again after missing most of last season. Hartsburg back to Broughton at the point. Slides it to Bellows in the corner. Number 23, Brian Bellows. Checked by Yerry Curry. Comes to Broughton. Into the corner to Keith Acton. Back to Bellows. Now to Broughton at the point. To Hartsburg. Shoots one wide by a couple of feet. Solheim for Minnesota. Two Bellows. He's checked and Paul Coffey feeds Gretzky. There's a two-on-two two break. Gretzky and Curry with Coffey trailing. Gretzky tried to slide it through, but Coffey had gone the other way. And Broughton intercepts. Broughton for Minnesota. Broughton checked on the play by Gretzky. Flips it back to the net. Now Solheim trying to center does but he's given a rough ride and the puck is shot away by Charlie Huddy. Fewer out of the net this time he takes no chance with Gretzky coming in after a loose puck. He just scooped it up and held on to it. Other games in the NHL some high scoring games second period at Hartford. The Whalers leading Detroit six to one. Also in the second period Philadelphia on home ice they lead Vancouver five to one. And in the first period, Los Angeles at Montreal, no score. Nine minutes, 32 seconds left here in the first period. 44 seconds left in Messier's penalty for Edmonton. This is number 11, Tom McCarthy for the North Star. Giving it to Gordy Roberts. Now at center ice, broken up by low and cleared away. Both way out of the net, defeated to McCarthy. Long pass at center. That's knocked away by Lowe. Here's Lowe for Edmonton. The order's still shorthanded, but moving dangerously close again. Roberts has it for Minnesota. Now broken up, and here's McClellan. Tried to move it over to an open man, number 12, Hunter, but it was broken up. Minnesota still on the power play. Now Messier is back on. Here's Minnesota with Cicerelli. Dropping it to McCarthy. That shot blocked by Lowe. Lawton behind the net. Centered it, and Hunter shoots it away. 
You could tell the North Stars were jumpy after that shorthanded goal on that last power play. Dan, I've never seen a team jump into the holes as well as right now the Edmonton Oilers are doing while they're killing this penalty. A shot by rookie Scott Bukestad stopped by Fuhr and he held on to it. From Bloomington, Minnesota, you're watching the NHL on USA. We'll be right back. Bartender's next big league pitcher. And loves to serve fire brewed strows. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. Strows and stroh life. Fire brewed for smoother taste. With Gary Green and Al Troutman, this is Dan Kelly. 2 nothing Edmonton here in the first period. At Bloomington, Minnesota, we have 8 minutes, 25 seconds left in the opening period. Eukstead, the rookie on the faceoff, got the draw, but Don Jackson for Minnesota. Works it out on the board, held in by Snaps, a bouncing puck. Napier couldn't get to it for Minnesota. Now the puck in behind the goal, and Randy Gregg starts out for Edmonton. His pass to Pat Hughes. Dumped in by the order. Kurt Giles hustles back. Four check by Billy Carroll. Semenko in there as well. And now it is Hughes flipping it in behind the net. In there is Carroll, but he's checked. And Scott Bukestead, number 14. Long clearing pass just out of Napier's reach. And down Jackson, number 29, back to pick it up. Try to pass to Hughes that hopped over his stick. And Harold snaps. Going back for Minnesota. Cleared one on the board. Hughes intercepting. Centered Kurt Giles knocked it down to Bukestead number 14. Bukestead tried to set up Napier. Cleared away by the Oiler goaltender Pure. Now it's centered again and the Oilers come to center. A pass over to Big Dave Semenko who shoots it in. Roberts coming back for Minnesota. Lord Roberts to Brian Bellows. Bellows trying to go around Charlie Huddy, almost did. Got it in front of the net, nobody there. Keith Axon to Bellows. Back to action number 12. Now to Bellows in the corner. Sander! McCarthy just failed to tip it in. And Yerry Curry feeds it, and here's Gretzky with Kroshelniski. Gretzky shoots one, Beaupre, a glove save on a low shot by Gretzky. For our local systems, we'll pause here. USA Sports is bringing you the National Hockey League. This week on USA's Sunday Showdown, Lee J. Cobb is the judge whose love for his daughter is threatened by a revenge-seeking former friend. What do you want? We both know what I want and what I'm going to get from you and why. I'm the Virginian. And on Lancer, Johnny meets his match in a deadly duel for possession of a wild stallion. I said nobody's taking that horse. USA is big enough for the two of them, the Virginian and Lancer, at 7 Eastern, Sunday. Two to nothing, the Edmonton Oilers leading. They have their big line, Gretzky, Crucial, Niski, and Curry on the ice from the faceoff. Coffee shot from the point wide, and McCarthy clears it away. Grant Fuhr out of the net to shoot it on the board. And Charlie Huddy. Cleared one, knocked down. Here's a chance for Bellows in. Shot it wide, centered again. Comes to Roberts at the point. Shoots one. That's deflected off of Huddy and went wide. And Krusilniski feeds Gretzky. Now Yeri Curry, number 17. His shot goes over the glass and into the crowd. Let's go to our USA studio and Al Troutwick. Well, thank you, Dan. We're looking ahead to the first intermission. We'll talk to the Conn Smythe Trophy winner, Stanley Cup champion, and a member of the Canada Cup winning team. That is Mark Messier of the Edmonton Oilers. We'll tell you who scored the Oilers' first goal. We'll tell you how you can live out your hockey fantasy. And we'll also have Gary Green with a studio in the studio with me to talk about news in the NHL. Now back to the game. If only the Oilers could skate, they may have a future in this game. I don't think Al Trudwick is any more <laughs> handsome than he was last year, do you? <laughs> Here's a chance for Edmonton. Beaupre knocked it away. Hartford clears it. And here is Dennis Farouk trying to set up Brent Ashton. The pass was too far ahead. 
Ashton digs in and keeps the play on side. He and uh, Brian Lawton trying to dig it free. And we'll get a face off in the Edmonton zone. I think Al's note of sarcasm is, is very correct. Well, we don't want to spoil your game right now, but we have to tell you that this game is authorized under television rights granted by the National Hockey League. It's presented solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, and other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Hockey League is strictly prohibited. Otherwise, don't do it. Do you ever have any new lines? I've heard you say that before, hundreds of times. <laughs> That's because I have to do this disclaimer every single night, Dan. Here's Hartsburg for Minnesota shooting it behind the net. Buck cleared on the boards. And Glenn Anderson feeds it to Messier, number 11. Mark Messier moving it into the corner. Lindstrom in with snap. Snap rides Lindstrom. Now the puck still loose behind the net. Out in front. And Anderson almost was able to stuff it in on his backhand. Oilers still with pressure on. Messier and Craig Hartsburg. Hartsburg gets it to Ashton, now to Marouk, number nine. Dennis Marouk flipping it in, but Kevin Lowe is there for the order. Lowe feeds Anderson, number nine. Anderson leaves it for Messier, a shot wide of the net. And number eight, 98, Brian Lawton, the 20-year-old second-year man, gives it to Marouk. Long shot, Fuhr handles that. Randy Gregg clears it into the center ice area. And Edmonton on the attack with McClellan moving in and sliding out about 25 feet was Beaupre to cover up on it. Beaupre is not taking any chances in the remainder of this per first period of play. He's been burned a couple of times. He's coming way out of his net in order to grab those loose pucks. Maybe showing a little lack of confidence right now in his defense. But then again against these Oilers, hang on to those loose pucks. There's a shot. Now the rebound. They score! On the rebound. Poking it in. The young rookie out of North Dakota, Gord Sherbin. He had a hat trick the other night, and he picked up a big rebound there, and it's 3-0 Edmonton. Tough to blame Donnie Beaupre on this one. Watch Sherbin when he gets the puck. Now look in front of the net area, right in the middle of your screen. When he gets the puck, how can Beaupre see the puck? No chance. Kurt Giles right down in front of him. There's big Dave Hunter, number 12, standing in front of him. Didn't have a sight on that puck whatsoever. Gord Sherman, 21-year-old rookie out of North Dakota and the Canadian Olympic team. Former 10th round draft choice of the others. And he gets a goal here. Here's Payne now for Minnesota. Shot as high off the glass. Napier tries to center one. Nobody there. And Pat Hughes has it for the order. Comes to center, shoots it in. Going back to get it, Bukestead, the Minnesota rookie. His pass to Mark Napier, number 16. Napier to Robert. Robert gets set, shoots one, blocked in front of the net. Buck is still loose. Low trying to cover up on it. Now Fuhr a save. Napier a shot, no goal. Apparently Fuhr was able to dive across and smother it. I thought for sure that Mark Napier was going to be able to stuff it in. Napier right there to the left of Grant Fuhr. I thought that he had put the puck in the net. In fact, before the referee had blown the whistle, there you see the scramble in front of the net area. Loose puck finally comes up. Watch the referee. Oh, you can't quite see him before he was. Well, right it never was in. He got it right on the goal line. Well, I'd like to see that one again because here we'll get a chance right from behind the net area. Watch closely the puck. You can see where Fuhr is positioned. When the puck comes back, oh, you're right, Dan. It did not go over the goal line. It has to go all the way across. Only half of that puck was across. If any portion of it is on the goal line, it's not a goal. That time it was right on the line when Fuhr grabbed it. Now Edmonton on the attack again, centering one, and Hartsburg is there to clear it away. This is number 11, McCarthy. Moves in, shoots one right on, pure a body save, and he fell backwards but held on to it. Coast to coast in all 50 states, it's the NHL on USA.
there could be a time when your home or condo insurance gets put to the test. But Kemper won't fail you. Call an independent agent for Kemper Home or Condo Insurance with features like convenient budget payment plans and full contents replacement coverage. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. Three and a half minutes left in the first period. That's the last Edmonton scoring play. The rookie, Sherbin, is fourth of the year from Randy Gregg, 15-25. How do you like a youngster out of North Dakota adding a little more offense to an already loaded Edmonton artillery force. He got a hat trick Sunday night against Quebec starting to put the puck in the net after a slow training camp but they've got some good hopes for it. For it serving. Harold steps with a shot wide of the net. Minnesota putting on some pressure. Kevin Lowe trying to freeze it there for Edmonton as he's forechecked by McCarthy. Now Keith Acton comes in. He spun around in crucial Niski. We'll get a penalty here for Edmonton. Mike Krushelniski, the former Boston Bruin, came over in the offseason from the Bruins at a trade for Ken Linsman, who's now with Boston. This is a key time right now for the Minnesota North Stars. Three minutes, five seconds remaining in this period. Here they've got an opportunity. Let's take a look on this penalty. There you'll see it right to the left of your screen. Krushelniski in the penalty box. North Stars setting up with that faceoff deep in Edmonton's end zone. Have got to win this faceoff right now. Acton taking it. They're behind three to nothing, and one of the goals was a shorthanded goal by Edmonton. Here's Hartsburg, and now right from the faceoff, Messier and Acton get their sticks up. And we're going to have penalties. And now Acton and Messier put their sticks up. And it wouldn't take much to get something going here. Now Fogelin and Keith Acton. Take a jab at each other. The referee Morrell stepped in quickly here as soon as Acton and Messier high sticked each other on the face off. Well, there you can see exactly where it started. I had no sooner said that Keith Acton was going to have to win that draw. He did, in fact, win that draw, getting it to Bellows. But that's when the fisticuffs started. A little pushing and shoving. Morrell sending them both to the penalty box now, and maybe we'll get this face off started all over again, but it's not going to be in the same position. Gretzky has scored twice. The rookie Gord Sherman has scored once. It's 3 nothing for the Edmonton Oilers. Right now, those minor penalties, coincidental minors, with the Oilers already a man short, so they don't go on the clock. Crucial Niski had a minute 56 left in his penalty as those were called. Now the Oilers with Fogelin being forechecked on the play. Here's Gretzky breaking out with Curry. Three on two, Edmonton break. Curry to Gretzky. Hartsburg is there. And Craig Hartsburg. Now they work it to Bellows. At center ice, a pass to McCarthy. Into Maroof. Maroof checked by Lowe. Now Curry back to the net. Here is Tom McCarthy. McCarthy for Minnesota to Maroof. Back to Roberts at the point. Roberts. Into Marouk at the side of the goal. McCarthy centered it. Gretzky cleared it. Now stolen and Bellows got it wide. Number 23, Brian Bellows to Marouk. Marouk centers one, but right onto an Edmonton stick, and it's cleared away by Yerry Curry. Gretzky racing down. Bofre cleared it, but right onto Gretzky sticking Yerry Curry. And Curry then is pulled out, and Craig Hartsburg will get a penalty. And again, you see the dangerous Edmonton penalty killing situation. North Stars had excellent possession, set up inside of Edmonton's end zone, just made a bad pass, and then went to, the puck goes down the ice to the North Stars. The North Stars end up taking a penalty to try and avoid Edmonton getting another excellent scoring opportunity. Craig Hartsburg was indeed that person, the captain of the North Stars, that took that penalty. But maybe he figured it saved the goal. Well, he may just be right. Because Gretzky had put Curry seemingly in the clear. Now each team a man short. Less than two minutes to play in the first period. Three to nothing Edmonton. Number seven is Neil Broughton. Trying to speed through the defense. Did he score? Great goal by Neil Broughton. Out of the University of Minnesota. And did he turn on the afterburners there? Well, he 
a hometown boy, and do they love him here in this building. Watch the speed of Broughton. He loves that center ice area. There he goes. You talk about the Oilers' speed, they couldn't even come close to catching him. Broughton putting that puck right up over top of Fuhr, giving the North Stars a little bit of hope. So that cuts the Edmonton lead to three to one. Now Broughton again with the puck. Couldn't clear it out, held in by Edmonton. East team a man short. Here comes Broughton with Cicerelli over to Cicerelli. Shoots one, Fuhr the save, centered. Here's Broughton from behind the net. Neil Broughton, number seven, who just scored that goal, dropping it to the point to Giles. Into Cicerelli. Tried to stuff it in. Pure a stick save, and Randy Gregg leads it to center. Here's Kevin McClellan with a shot wide of the net. Now Cicerelli, Minnesota. Clearing it in. They're shorthanded. We're in the final minute of the first period. Crucial Niski is back on. Hartsburg is still up. And so Minnesota shorthanded as Anderson tries to move in. That's knocked away. And here comes Brent Ashton, number 17 for Minnesota. Out of the goal is Pure to clear it away. Now Paul Coffey. To Willie Lindstrom, back to Coffey. Broken up at the blue line and cleared away by number 10, Gord Roberts. Charlie Huddy behind his own goal. Cleared it, gets it handed back to him again. And now Glenn Anderson gives it to Gretzky. At center ice, Lindstrom flipping it in. Coffey races in after it. Cleared away by the Minnesota defense, held in by the North Stars. Here's Gretzky, centered to Anderson. A shot blocked by Roberts. Roberts couldn't clear it, and Volpre. Bad save on Paul Coffey from about six or eight feet out. And the period comes to an end. Shots on goal in the opening period. Each team had 10. Coming up, one of the Edmonton big guns, Mark Messier, the Conn Spice Trophy winner one year ago, or last May, as a matter of fact. After one period of play, here in Bloomington, Minnesota, the score, the Edmonton Oilers three, the Minnesota North Stars won. Our first intermission activities coming right up. Al Trotwig will be in the USA Studio. Now there's an easier way for you to keep up with all the latest in news, sports, money, and life. It's USA Today delivered right to your home or office every day. And when you subscribe, look at all you'll get. A whole new way. USA Today, USA Today, the nation's newspaper. At home or at the office, it brings you all the news from around the corner and around the country in four colorful sections. News, sports, money, life. USA Today, exciting, rewarding, fascinating, vital. USA brings you the USA. USA Today. Via satellite from the nation's capital right to your door. Call now and you can have it delivered at this special introductory price. Order 13 weeks at our regular rate and you'll get an additional two weeks free. That's 15 weeks, 75 issues, all for just $22.75. But you must act now. This deal won't last forever. Plus, if you call now with your paid subscription, you'll also get this matching USA Today t-shirt and cap <laughs> free. Just call 1-800-453-2900 to start delivery of USA Today. That's 1-800-453-2900 to get USA Today. The newspaper of tomorrow is here today. USA Today, the nation's most colorful and most comprehensive newspaper. News covering the nation from every state. Money, how to make it, how to spend it. Sports, all the results from everywhere. And life, the talk, the trends, and what's worth trying. USA brings you the USA. Now's the time to act. Get USA Today and your matching T-shirt and cap free. Call now. 
We are back live at the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. A quick reminder of the next edition of the NHL on USA. The St. Louis Blues with their new look on the uniforms take on the Philadelphia Flyers under general manager Bobby Clark. That's next Thursday, 7.30 Eastern Time on USA from the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Right here at the Met Center, it is the Edmonton Oilers looking good. Minnesota North Stars scrapping a little bit near the end of the period, but right now it is the Oilers leading by a score of 3-1. to one. My guest in the studio is Mark Messier. And, Mark, really not a whole lot to talk about your year. I mean, you really didn't do very much, unless, of course, you consider the Stanley Cup and the Conn Smythe and the Canada Cup. But they're all different from personal respects. First of all, the team win, the Stanley Cup. When did it first sink in, and what was the best feeling about it sinking in? Uh, I don't know. I think it sank in pretty quickly. I, something that big and something that important to, to every hockey player was, uh, you know, it was a big thrill for everybody. And, you know, we knew right in the last game that we had won the Stanley Cup, and it's taken us a long time to get there. And, and there's players that play all their lives and never have a chance to even come that close. And so, you know, when we did win it, we were we were aware that we did that we did something pretty special. And and uh, you know, it's just a great thrill. Then the dream of being selected as the best player who performed under the greatest pressure, the personal achievement, uh, second to the team achievement, the Conn Smythe Trophy. Tell me what it was like when they handed you the trophy and then to wake up the next morning and say, my goodness, over the past uh, month or so during the playoffs, I was the best one. Yeah, it took, that took a little while to sink in because, uh, you know, I was just so caught up in the, in the whole just the Stanley Cup itself and, you know, winning the Stanley Cup and, you know, playing on a, such a great team. And then all of a sudden, you know, them announcing that one that Conn Smythe was... You know, totally unexpected and uh, something I'll cherish the rest of my life. But uh, you know, just you know, just looking at the trophy when you know when I had it for that week and seeing the other names on it, you know, is you know the players that have won that trophy are all great hockey players, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's just something else for me to win it. How has your life changed uh, emotionally? I would think you're much more confident, but in other ways, I don't really think you know I've, I've changed that much. I don't think any of the guys have changed that much. Uh, we're, we're aware that we are the Stanley Cup champions in the summer, which I think everybody that's won it is aware of. And, you know, we're proud of the fact that we did win it. And, uh, but now it's in a whole different year, you know, and we had to go right out two months later and prove ourselves right back again in the Canada Cup uh, that you are talking about earlier. And, you know, it's wild to think that, you know, every time you go on the ice, you have to prove yourself over and over and over again. And, um, maybe that's what's so great about hockey is that, uh, you know, you can be a hero one day and a bum the next and, <laughs> and uh, you know, you just got to keep trying every time you're out there. Then the Canada Cup, as you mentioned, we've mentioned it a couple of times, the national achievement to go with the personal and the team one. That game against the Soviets, I had a chance to see it and the, the arena was literally rocking with that overtime win. Yeah, that was uh, probably one of, like a lot of people said, that's one of the greatest games I've ever, I've ever played. And, Playing in it and uh, looking back at the tape now, and uh, and I can see where people can see that because his pace was unbelievable, and I think we went with three or four lines the whole game, 30 second shifts, and no longer than that, and um, he just went all out for 30 seconds and got off the ice, and and uh, you know when you keep that pace up for 60 minutes, it's got to be a fast hockey game. Mark, I know you haven't put the puck in the net yet, but strange things happen to <laughs> players that come in here. They have a very strange way of scoring goals in the next period. Good luck. Thank oh, you. God, I hope so. Thank you very much. Mark Messier of the Edmonton Oilers, Conn Smythe, Stanley Cup, and Canada Cup. It's been quite a year. A little look back now into Oilers history. The first Oilers goal in the National Hockey League, October 10th, 1979. Kevin Lowe of the Edmonton Oilers. He is still here, and so are so many of the key players for many years into the future. General Manager Glenn Sather has seen to that. Coming up, we'll take a look at news in the National Hockey League and we'll tell you how to live out your hockey fantasy. All that and more in a moment. In Columbia Pictures' new film, The Razor's Edge, Bill Murray, in his first dramatic role, travels to Paris to find himself. You, too, can find yourself in Paris when USA's Night Flight sends you on an all-expense-paid trip for two, courtesy of American Express. 250 runners-up win a copy of The Razor's Edge from Penguin Books. To enter, send a postcard with your name, address, age, and phone number to The Razor's Edge, P.O. Box USA, Glen Rock, New Jersey, 07452. Deadline is November 2nd. Enter now, and you've got The Edge. Jennifer O'Neill has nothing to fear but fear itself. James Mason also stars in The Flower in His Mouth on the USA Movie at 8 p.m. Eastern Monday. This week on Saturday Nightmares, Satan's power is unleashed in a supernatural tale of terror. Fear no evil. Them and Baxter and George Siegel pair up in a thriller with a twist from Alfred Hitchcock. It's the best scare on the air. USA's Saturday Nightmares at 8 p.m. Eastern Saturday. 
20 years ago, a leukemia and related diseases took enough lives to wipe out a city the size of Burlington, Vermont. Since then, the Leukemia Society of America has funded $32 million in research. Today, 8 out of 10 children with the most common type of leukemia will survive. And survival rates for adults have increased significantly. But until everyone survives leukemia, we need your help. Give to the Leukemia Society of America. We're closing in on a killer. Where else can you see great performances like these? Get an appreciation of the fine arts. Where can you witness high drama? And enjoy all-round quality entertainment. Right here on The Gong Show. Uh, are you in for a treat? Weekdays at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on the USA Network. Back at the Met Center, I'm Al Trout, where Gary Green will be with me in just a second. What could you possibly have in common with a drummer from Styx, an MC at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, an oil rigger in Alaska, an attorney from Chicago? Well, you can reach for the stars. It's all part of fulfilling your hockey fantasy. In Lake Placid, October 28th to November 2nd, you can suit up for one of the four great teams in NHL history. Toronto, you can play with Johnny Bauer. Detroit, you can play with Gordie Howe. Chicago, Dennis Hull. And for Boston, Wayne Cashman. It only costs $1,995. Not a lot when you talk about fulfilling dreams. The telephone number to call, and there are people standing by right now who can explain a lot more about this. It's called Reach for the Stars. It's in Lake Placid, New York. The phone number, 519-824-3515. That's 519-824-3515. That price includes your meals, your hotel, a uniform with your name on it. There'll be reporters there. And if you don't think you can still skate, you might be able to coach or be a general manager or get mixed up in all kinds of trouble. Gary Green sounds like a lot of fun up there in Lake Placid. Rumor is that Al Trutwig may be playing for the Boston Bruins there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if Jerry Cheevers would like that very much, but we may be up there trying to stir up as much trouble as we can. We'll begin now with the real news in the NHL. Daryl Sittler finally decided to report to the D Detroit Red Wings last night. He suited up for the first time, and that's kind of interesting. Murray Craven and Joe Patterson go to Philadelphia. Bobby Clark thought he needed some help on the left side. And I wonder what you think about whether Daryl's reaction was justified or not. I think that Daryl was set on ending his career. That's no surprise in Philadelphia whenever that time may come. I think, on the other hand, Bob Clark, now Bob Clark as the, the general manager, that was a tough decision for him to make, too, Al. It really separated him now from being a player in the past to being yeah. a general manager, and that's a key a pressured move for him. But Daryl Sittler, just a, a very class person, had a, has had a great history here in the National Hockey League. I think he went to Detroit, and he's even come out and said that because he can beat the Toronto Maple Leafs as many times as possible, and they play each other in the same division. So last night he was back in the line with his old buddy, Tiger Williams, I think that should be an interesting team this year in Detroit. Busiest men in the National Hockey League? Team doctors, no question about it. New York, Vancouver, Chicago, uh, Boston, New York Rangers, Calgary Flames, Minnesota North Stars. You run down the list. Not only a lot of injuries, Gary, but strange injuries. Well, when you take a look at torn stomach muscles and, and those type of injuries, something that you don't hear of a great deal. Al, I think a lot of it has to do, you take a look at this Minnesota North Stars team right now, they've got four defensemen out of the lineup right here. You look at the National Hockey League, there's 21 teams, that's a lot of players. They're bigger, they're stronger, they skate faster, and it's when, they're co when collisions happen out there in the ice, I think you've got to take into consideration that they're going a little bit faster and they're a little bit bigger than they used to be, and it does cause injuries, and your body has just got to be attuned to that. I think, too, I'd like to see training camp be extended a little bit longer. Yep. We've got a lot of injuries at the start of this season. I think for the players and for the coaches, the coaches would love it to have a little bit longer training camp. That way you don't have to jump right in there and play so many exhibition games. Well, you know that new players entering the National Hockey League now must wear helmets, but the officials don't. That all changed a couple of weeks ago when Andy Van Helleman decided to put one on for NHL play. Also, Ron Asseltine, uh, one of the linesmen, decided to put one on as well. What do you think about it? There's a couple of thoughts. I've heard some people say that, well, you don't want the referees and linesmen to have any more attention than they've already got. Putting helmets on right now gives them some attention. That will kind of go away quickly, though. I think they should all be wearing them. Why should anybody be out there in the ice and risking personal injury? 
they can be involved, especially the linesmen. When they're breaking up fights and they're along the boards and pucks are flying, sticks are flying, I really think that linesmen especially should wear them and why not put them on the referees as well. And the way Dan, Gary and I are getting along lately, we're going to have to wear helmets <laughs> soon too. A quick recap of what you may want to send away for. It's the National Hockey League Complete Player and Team Record Guide. It's the Team League History, over 250 photographs, the Hockey Hall of Fame section, all-star records, last season's final statistics, this year's schedule, complete team directories, and a special Stanley Cup section, all in one full-size book. It's the same book that Gary and I use. The 1984 NHL Guide and Record Book is available by sending $15.95 to NHL Guide and Record Book, Box U, 34th floor, 505th Avenue, New York, New York, 10110. That's where we get all our information. Right here, after one period of play, Oilers leading the Minnesota North Stars 3-1, to one, and they are looking good. The NHL on USA continues live from Minnesota in a moment. This week on USA's Sunday Showdown, Lee J. Cobb is the judge whose love for his daughter is threatened by a revenge-seeking former friend. What do you want? We both know what I want and what I'm going to get from you and why. I'm the Virginian. And on Lancer, Johnny meets his match in a deadly duel for possession of a wild stallion. I said nobody's taking that horse. USA is big enough for the two of them, the Virginian and Lancer, at 7 Eastern, Sunday. It was Tuesday, August 4th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery division. Bank detail. The boss is Captain Howe. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. Dragnet, the definitive police drama starring Jack Webb as Sergeant Joe Friday and Harry Morgan as Officer Bill Gannon. Dragnet fights the battle against crime seven days a week on the USA Network. It's an endless, glamorous, thankless job that's got to be done. At 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, tomorrow. Louder than words, USA's College Football 84. Get all the tennis news, profiles, tips from the pros, and much more with Tennis Magazine Reports. At 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, tomorrow. At the end of one period of play in Bloomington, Minnesota, it's the Edmonton Oilers 3, the Minnesota North Stars 1. Scoring summary of the first period, Gretzky at 217 to make it 1-0. Gretzky again, a short-handed goal at 7-11 to make it 2-0. Then Sherbin, the Edmonton rookie, made it 3-0 at 15-25 before Neil Broughton finally scored for Minnesota at 18-15. The shots on goal in the period were even 10 shots apiece. Well, what can you say that already hasn't been said about the explosiveness of this Edmonton Oilers team? And I think we saw it in living color and firsthand in the first period. Gretzky, the first two goals of the game, one of which uh, was shorthanded, both on breakaways, both showing the great ability of Mr. Gretzky, including the second goal, which was the shorthanded effort. Broughton was trying to tie him up, but Gretzky got free, took the pass from Coffey and Huddy and walked in alone and scored the shorthanded goal. Really, only 10 shots apiece. Minnesota had some good scoring chances of their own, but it was the early two goals by Gretzky that really took the starch out of the... Minnesota club and you can really tell particularly the next time they had a power play out there they were just downright uptight and uh, those early goals really had a telling effect on Minnesota and the first period story and perhaps in the eventual outcome of this game meanwhile both teams are back on the ice and we're ready for second period action first meeting of the season between the Oilers and the North Stars. The referee Dennis Burrell standing at center ice. You see Don Beaupre. He had given up just three goals against in the first three games of the season. And actually one of those games went into overtime so his average was below one. But he gives up three goals in the first period of this game to Edmonton and two of them were to that guy right there. Number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Gary Green has made his way back up into our broadcast booth. The others look pretty slick, don't they? 
They really do, Al. Trotwig gave a sarcastic comment saying that too bad the Edmonton Oilers can't skate. Well, those Oilers were skating, I think, even quicker than we saw them skating last year during the Stanley Cup Finals. Mark Messe, very calm and relaxed out there, just shows you what confidence can do. They know that they are the Stanley Cup champions. That same type of confidence the New York Islanders have shown over the years and are still showing, in fact. Winning just continues to breed confidence and, and a more winning attitude. The Oilers were a cocky team before. Now they've won. What would they be class? Super cocky or what? <laughs> I don't think so. I think they've become a fairly mature bunch of guys, Dan, that understand that they could be knocked off in any given year. Here are the Oilers on the attack. Anderson couldn't get around Hartsburg and Lee Fogelman works it over onto the wing for Willie Lindstrom who shot it in. Beaupre out of the net to clear it himself and Tom McCarthy beats Brian Bellows, number 23. Bellows fell down on the play and Fogelman flips it ahead. Lindstrom giving it to Anderson. Back to Lindstrom but knocked away at the Minnesota Blue Line. And now Lee Fogelman shoots it in. Number 28 is Harold Snaps, the former Vancouver Canuck, to Bellow. Ahead to Acton. But Hunter was there for Edmonton to clear it away. Now Hartsburg to Bellow. Bellows to Ken Solheim, number 31. Got it in, and Randy Gregg is back for Edmonton. Clearing it, and here's McClellan, number 24. Couldn't get around Roberts, and Solheim feeds Cicerelli. That's knocked away, and the Oilers drop it back to Randy Gregg and attack again. They deflect it in. Clear it around on the boards as Minnesota and their new defenseman Bob Rouse cleared it. Shot right back in by Don Jackson, the Oilers player who is from right here in Bloomington, Minnesota. Now it's Cicerelli. Winds up, shoots one, stick save by Fuhr. And McClellan. Flips it to center ice. Sherbin tried to get it over onto the other wing. Did, but the North Stars break it up, and back comes Broughton to Cicerelli. He knows Cicerelli shooting, and he fired it wide. At the point, Roberts a drive, and a stick save by Fuhr. And it deflects up over the glass and into the crowd. Perhaps the North Stars were in a little bit of awe of the Edmonton Oilers in that first period. They've come on strong in the start of the second period. A couple of good scoring opportunities. That last one by, by Roberts, but two good ones by Dino Cicerelli. There's the one by Roberts right from the point. You can see that sprawling save that Grant Fuhr had to make. Dino Cicerelli right from the slot area twice had good scoring opportunities. 18.06 left in the second period. Brian Lawton out centering a line with Ashton and Maruk on the wing. Charlie Huddy clears it around on the board to Gretzky. And going back to get it is Krusilniski, number 26 for Edmonton. He leaves it for number seven, Paul Coffey. Cleared to center ice. Belichick had a top over his stick. And going back is Kurt Giles. And this is an icing call against Edmonton. From Maine to Maui, you're watching the National Hockey League on USA Sports. East Point, Maine, and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. East Point means a New England clam bake, summer fun, and food at its best. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee lights. It's old Milwaukee. And Old Milwaukee lights. Taste as great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. Stop coming up to the left of the Edmonton goal. Dennis Baruch will take the draw. He used to be a center iceman, now converted to a winger. Baruch into the corner with Crucial Niski gets it behind the net and Huddy cleared it away. Kirk Giles at the point held it in. Coffee blocked his shot and is able to clear it to center, and Giles has it for Minnesota. Giles with a quick wrist shot. Love saved by Pure and Coffee for Edmonton. Flipping it to center ice. Knocked down and Gretzky takes over. Shot it to center, but right on to Baruch's stick. Back comes Baruch, but Brent Ashton was offside in the play. 
And they whistle the down of the Edmonton blue line. That one was close. I think that Ashton made a great effort to get back on side. The linesman right there on the job. Glenn Sather, as Dan mentioned previously, the coach and general manager and also the president of not, the Edmonton Oilers. On his two. right is his assistant, John Muckler. Who uh, a lot of credit has been given to with this Edmonton success. That's exactly right. Now, the, the word has been that John Muckler is going to be the future coach of the Edmonton Oilers. When ever Glenn Sather decides that he's going to just move upstairs and take care of the general manager and the president's job. From the face off, Fogelin working it into the center ice area, and there's a long shot by Anderson wide of the net. Cleared by Hartsburg, and Bellows gives it to Acton. Broken up, and the Oilers go back to get it. Glenn Anderson pass at center ice for number 11, Mark Messier. He dumps it around on the boards. Cleared out, Fogelin trying to hold it in. But it's shot to center by Payne, and Acton races after it. Kevin Lowe beats him. Now Messier dropping it back to number four, Lowe. Lowe into the center ice area to Anderson, who backhands a bouncer. We'll try and handle that, and this is Craig Hartsburg. To number 44, Steve Payne. Now to Bellows, number 23. Bellows uses the drop pass to Acton Drive. Payne the shot, another shot by Bellows. And Fuhr stopped them all. And the Oilers clear it away. Well, uh, 4A of three shots in a row that could have put Minnesota right back into the thick of this game. Just as though Grant Fuhr was saying, talk about skating, shooting, scoring goals. I've got a little bit to do with the success of this hockey team as well. Take a look, Keith Acton, number 12, first of all, but here comes two more opportunities. 44 pain, there's Bellows right in the middle of your screen, number 23, he gets off a great shot as well. Fear comes up, makes the save on all three of them. Here's Ashton trying to make a play, gets it in front of drive, and another save by Fuhr. This time, a glove save on Mark Napier. And Mr. Fuhr has come to play. Napier's had a couple of good opportunities tonight. Napier playing on that right side. Take a look right off the draw. That puck is picked up by Napier, and right from the top of the slot, he let a blistering drive go. Back to the live action in Bloomington, Minnesota, as Don Jackson loses the puck to Brent Ashton, but it was cleared away by Randy Gregg. Now Gordy Roberts back at his own line. Passing it to Scott Bukestead to Napier. Napier speeds in. Puts on the brake. Centers it. Broken up. Roberts now trying to work it in front. Did. Bukestad a backhand. Fuhr the save. Another shot by Bukestad. Another save by Fuhr. And now play is called. And a penalty coming up against the Oilers. The score. Edmonton 3. Minnesota 1. But the North Stars are coming on very strong. In a time of advanced technology and luxury cars, the 1985 Oldsmobile 98 Regency Brougham is the epitome of road management. Independent suspension on all four wheels keeps one oblivious to road conditions. The new multi-pot fuel injected power system assures spirited response. This is the luxury of precise performance. There is a special Perfect timing. Don Jackson, a slashing penalty, 4.36 here of the second period. I think that actually should have been a double minor, Dan, because Don Jackson played with a broken stick for an awfully long time there in front of that net area. Slashing was the initial call. I believe he should have had that second minor. Meanwhile, Minnesota has had nine shots on goal here in the first four minutes and odd seconds of this period. And now they're on the power play. So they have come out storming. Keith Acton, number 12, controlling. Back to Craig Hartsburg, a drive, they score! Steve Payne deflecting it in. Some words of wisdom from Mr. Mahoney, perhaps, between periods. The North Stars have come out hot. Watch this shot, number four, Hartsburg, but the tip in. Redirected. 
Steve Payne, number 44. Watch him right in the middle of your screen. He follows the puck closely. He gets that big blade in front of the puck, directs it right between Fjord, puts the North Stars within one. Now Gretzky steals one, his shot blocks. That was a power play goal for Minnesota to cut the Edmonton lead to three to two. And the orders come back, led by number 22, Charlie Huddy. Long shot that Beaupre steered aside. Gary Curry gets it behind the net. And the North Stars rookie, Bob Rouse, cleared it out on right wing. Now picked up by Roberts. Lord Roberts, number 10. Trying to center one to Keith Acton. Acton in front of a shot. You're the save there as Acton made a nifty move. And copy feed Gary Curry. And across the line to Crucial Niski, back to Curry. Going to be a penalty now against Minnesota as Rouse, the rookie, will get the gate. Number three, Bob Rouse will get a penalty. For our local systems, we'll pause here. It's the National Hockey League on USA. The USA Network presents a special event, Evita Peron, the true story of a woman's willful struggle to be somebody, no matter what. She loved one man. If you do what I say, no man in Argentina would touch you. She seduced a nation. I have a terrible longing to leave something behind. James Farentino stars with Faye Dunaway as Evita Peron, a special two-part USA premiere event at 8 p.m. Eastern, October 28th and 29th. The 20-year-old rookie, Bob Rouse, gets a slashing penalty here, and so Edmonton will be on a power play. He gave it to Yerry Curry, an old-fashioned two-hander. <laughs> well, he comes from the West, and they've chopped a little lumber out there before. He played his college or his junior hockey with Lethbridge. He is from Surrey, British Columbia, Bob Rouse. Meanwhile, Edmonton has seen their lead cut to 3-2, to two, and they attack. Number 99, Gretzky, checked by Brockton, who cleared it away. Now Solheim racing after it, but Paul Coffey back for the order. Pull down, Crucial Niski couldn't get it, and the North Stars clear up the center ice. Gary Curry, number 17. Head on the wing to Crucial Niski. Tried to flip it in, and he flipped it over the glass. That Minnesota last scoring play, a power play goal, Payne from Hartsburg and Acton, 4.52 the time. We didn't shy away from giving much credit to Paul Coffey and his teammates during that first period of play. Well, I'm sure that, as you can see right now, Glenn Sather's not too happy with the way that his troops have come out in this second period of play. The North Stars, on the other hand, they have been hot. They continue to take it to the Oilers. They have outshot Edmonton in this period, 10-1 to 1 to this point. Buck clear down the ice, and Kevin Lowe, number four, is back after it. He gives it to Gretzky. Gretzky dumps it in. Wolfray missed it behind the net. Curry trying to get it to Crucial Niski. He does. Mike Crucial Niski, number 26, works away from Kurt Giles behind the net to Gretzky. Back to Crucial Niski, but Roberts intercepts. Stolen again by Gretzky. Gretzky centered, Crucial Niski a poke at it. Now Gretzky a poke, and Beaupre stopped them all. Gretzky can't believe that he did not put that puck up high where he wanted to put it. Instead, he shoveled it right back into Don Beaupre and the mass of players in front of Beaupre. Gretzky a little disgusted with himself. Don Beaupre, he's only 23 years of age, but this is his fifth year with the North Stars. As you look at the North Star coach, Bill Mahoney, mustache as handsome as ever, isn't it? <laughs> well, we wanted to talk more about Bill Mahoney and that personal contract that he has that, that does not involve money. It's between he and Dino Cicerelli. We'll get time to do that sometime tonight. Cicerelli had criticized Mahoney at the end of the season, then apologized, and Gary will tell you the rest of the story. From the faceoff, Huddy at the point. Into Messier, back to Huddy. Now to Coffey, Edmonton still on a power play. Huddy shoots one. All right, they score. No goal. Yes, it is a goal. The red light came on. That shot deflected, and we had one on the goal line earlier. This one, according to the referee, Dennis Morrell, was across the goal line and will be a goal. Dennis Morrell looked at the... 
goalkeeper right behind. Well, there you can see it. That puck did go over the goal line. He was looking for the goal judge to give him some help. We'll see it from exactly where the goal judge sits. Is it over? Yeah, I think it was. It really is hard to tell from that I angle. Think our first angle showed it better. I thought it was over on that shot. He won't be the most popular man in Minnesota tonight, will he? One of the off-rink officials, the goal judge, on the spot at that end twice in this game. So the goal will stand, and Edmonton, a power play goal, takes the lead at 4-2. to two. Steve Payne now checks. Payne moving in. And back comes Edmonton on the attack. Offside at the... Minnesota blue line. Glenn Anderson apparently deflected that shot and will get credited with that last goal, the one that just trickled across the goal line. Well, they have given it to Anderson, in fact. Glenn Anderson has been known and called by his teammates somewhat of a free-spirited player. Glenn Sather is able to harness that free spirit of Glenn Anderson has had some excellent production out of him. Lindstrom and Huddy get assists, 7-12 the time. A power play goal it was, and Glenn Anderson did get the credit. As you look at Brian Bellows, the 20-year-old North Star. Brian Bellows got an insight into how Glenn Sather coaches because he, in fact, did play for Team Canada during the Canada Cup. Bellows said it won't probably help him out too much as far as what he learned from Sather's in playing against the Edmonton Oilers this year, but nevertheless, he had a great deal of respect for Sather's coaching. Four to two, Edmonton leading. The team's back at full strength as Fogelin flips one ahead. Now the North Stars come back, led by Hartsburg. Hartsburg to Acton to Payne. Payne centering one to Bellows. Bellows cutting in, back to Payne. Knocked away. Lindstrom comes in to hold it in or to try and clear it. Now, shot from the point by Sneps and Fjord the save there. And the orders clear it away. Harold Sneps. Shot it off the board to center ice. That's knocked away. And back comes Anderson, number nine. Anderson to Messier. He missed it. So did Kevin Lowe. And here is Solheim to Broughton. Broughton cutting in. Center to Solheim. He shoots. He scores! So live. From Chicago to Detroit to Minnesota, back to Detroit and back to Minnesota again. Ken Solheim may just have finally found a home. Watch this play by number seven, Broughton. There goes Solheim, right in the middle of your screen, number 31. He was able to get that stick down, even though he was covered by an oiler, coming back just enough Get it on the ice. He deflected the puck right between Fuhrer. Solheim, they tell me, had an outstanding exhibition season. 11 goals in 10 games. Not that that means a great deal, other than the fact that he can put the puck in the net. He's just taken off from there. Solheim, second of the regular season. Broughton in assists. 8.23 the time. Here's Broughton again with Solheim. McClellan hustling back as Broughton. Tries to make a centering pass. Couldn't pull it off. Broughton still with the puck. Gives it to Cicerelli. Cicerelli taken out of the play. And Don Jackson drops it back to Randy Gregg. And the Oilers attack. Their lead has been cut to one goal again. Puck is cleared out by Solheim over the glass and into the crowd. And a stoppage in play. Other scores in the second period at Hartford. The Whalers lead Detroit 6-1. to one. Third period at Philadelphia. The Flyers, who we'll see next week here on USA, lead Vancouver 7-1. to one. And in the third period at Montreal, the Los Angeles Kings. Three, the Montreal Canadiens, nothing. A little bit of a surprise there. Los Angeles winning in Montreal. Kings had not won a game in four starts prior to tonight, but they're leading 3-0. From the faceoff, Edmondson trying to center one. Dennis Farouk is there to clear it away. 
And number seven, Paul Coffey, goes back to get it. Oilers on the attack. Here's Curry. Curry shot. Hit Belichick and went to the corner. Randy Belichick for Minnesota. Trying to clear it. Now Lawton with Ashton and Maroof. Over to Ashton, number 17. Ashton stopped, tried to center it. Couldn't, and Kruselniski gets it for the order. He had to Gretzky. Gretzky trying to rope around Giles. Belichick intercepts his pass. Where to Coffey held it in with a rising shot. Beaupre, a glove save. The place to stay is USA for exclusive NHL coverage. More in just a moment. Norelco Road Attract, the shaving machine that challenges the world. Every blade, every electric, in closeness, comfort, speed, and performance. Only Norelco holds a charge up to three times longer than any leading razor. Only Norelco packs three floating heads with a patented twin action shaving system. Get it? And like it, or get your money back. Remember, only a Norelco performs like a Norelco. Gary, the North Stars have been a very different team in this period. 11 to 4 so far in this second period of play. Shots on net. And they've outscored Edmonton in this period 2 to 1. They trail 4 to 3. Here's Lowe at the point. His shot blocked, and Neff cleared the rebound, but not out. Big Semenko holding it in. Now center to Semenko. Shoots! Shot it wide on the short side. Napier, a good play off the boards for Scott Bukestead. Bukestead, the rookie to number four, who is Craig Hartsford. Centers one to Napier. Napier behind the net. Vogel and checked him. Now a loose puck as Billy Carroll gets it to Lowe. And Kevin Lowe passes to Pat Hughes at center. That's knocked away and snaps. Credit the Oilers Hughes playing his first game of the season. He was bothered by a full hamstring. Shot it in. Hartsburg pass to Napier. Napier trying to go around down Jackson. Napier centered one. Cleared away by Randy Gregg. And now at center ice, the Oilers pick it up. Here is a break for Glenn Anderson. Off the shoulder of Beaupre with that shot. Willie Lindstrom in the corner battling Craig Hartsburg, and they hold it there. Having a healthy Craig Hartsburg will be a big plus for Minnesota this year. I really think with Hartsburg back now, that to Bill Mahoney anyway, that Hartsburg means one more goal a game for and probably one less goal a game against. That's how important Craig Hartsburg is to this North Stars team. They missed him dearly last year. Missed most of the season undergoing knee surgery. He's the Minnesota captain. Four to three, Edmonton leading, 8.54 left in the second period. Gary, a very entertaining game. Yes, it is, and I think Bill Mahoney and his North Stars have added to that. Here's Lindstrom a chance, and Beaupre comes up big. And then it's cleared by Roberts down to the Edmonton zone. Don Jackson, who used to be with Minnesota, and hails from this town, Bloomington, Minnesota, back to get it. Over on the far boards, it's Anderson back to the net to Jackson. Jackson feeding up the middle to Messier. Broken up with the Minnesota blue line by the rookie Bob Rouse. Rouse to Roberts. Now to Payne. Payne's pass too far for Bellows, and Jackson cleared it away. Bob Rouse, number three. Got it to center ice. Two Oilers collide, and one of them, Messier, went down. Here's Randy Gregg to Lindstrom, number 19. Willie Lindstrom takes a hit, gives it to Gregg, who shoots it in. And Gordy Roberts back after it. On right wing for Bellows to Acton, and it's a two-line offside pass, face off back inside the Minnesota Blue Line. If we take a look at the former Montreal Canadian, Keith Acton, it almost appeared on that particular shift that the North Stars were very conscientious about their defensive game. They were staying back, they were playing that line across the blue line. Acton, McCarthy, and Bellows were making sure that Gretzky wasn't going to get good possession of the puck and be able to walk right in. They were holding the blue line well. That's something you've got to do against Gretzky if you're going to succeed in this game. You really have to give the North Stars credit, Gary. On home ice, when you get behind three to nothing, the fans get a little restless. They bounce back. I don't know what Bill Mahoney said in that intermission, but they bounce back and are playing very well. 
Here's Ashton, number 17. Puck is cleared away. And Curry, Edmonds it to Coffey. Over to Gretzky, off the stick of Giles. Edmonton controlling, though, centered by Gretzky, and good chance for Crucial Niski, and Beaupre made the save on the short side and held on to it. You'd well, we mentioned next week we will be in Philadelphia at the Spectrum for more NHL action. The St. Louis Blues and the Philadelphia Flyers from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, game time, 7.30 Eastern time next Thursday night here on USA Sports. St. Louis starting the season on the road. Four road games, and they come home winning two and losing two. That's a pretty good way to start the season. Well, that it is. It shows good things for the future. Well, they have had a pretty bright future after their record last year. Things are really on the move. Here is the loose puck in the Minnesota zone. Step took Gretzky out of the play, and now Payne comes up with the loose puck. Dumps it down the ice. Bellows racing after it. Shoots. Oh, and pure a save. And he's injured. Bellows got all he could on that shot, and it hit pure, I think, on the shoulder. And he went down like he'd been shot. I'm a little surprised that Bellows shot right there. It was not from the greatest angle, perhaps, especially considering how far out of the net Fuhrer was. I think Bellows may have had time to pick up that puck and cut in. He had a good head of steam going, but you can see what a hard drive that was of Bellows. And Fuhrer, I think he may have taken it right on the shoulder area. Take a, another look. There's the shot from Bellows. It's up high. It's right around the shoulder or arm area. That one hurts. Grant Fuhrer, apparently all right. And for our local systems, we'll pause now. It's the NHL on USA. He's rock legend Neil Young. In a USA premiere event at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, Monday, October 29th. Right from the faceoff, Gordy Roberts shot for Minnesota wide of the net and now low for the Oilers. Clears it to center ice and Roberts chases back for Minnesota. Roberts a pass to Lawton, number 98. Ryan Lawton drops one back but right onto an Edmonton stick. And here comes Anderson, or at least it's the rookie Sherbin, number eight, to McClellan. In front to Sherbin, Roberts cleared it away. And now it is Rouse for Minnesota, ganged up on by McClellan. Puck comes loose on the board. Brent Ashton getting it to Lawton. Brian Lawton, 20-year-old, second-year man to Dennis Maruki. Score! Maruk to the long shot, ties this game up. 4-4. Four, four. shot it was indeed Fuhrer may have been thinking about that injured shoulder there you can see that shot just a blistering drive as Dennis Marouk can do he scored over 50 goals for me in Washington and here's one of the ways that he can score I think that puck changed a little bit of direction as well off of Lee Fogel and stick but it beat Fuhrer cleanly well it's a 4-4 game at one time Edmonton led three to nothing our stars clear it in. Back is Randy Gregg to get it. And Gregg works it free. De Messier now at center ice to Anderson. Spun around by Giles and knocked down, but the play was offside at the Minnesota blue line. Baruch gets the goal. Lawton an assist. So does Brent Ashton. What a difference 20 minutes makes. The first period belonged all to the Oilers. Look at Dennis Baruch. He ties this game up, that blistering shot right up in the top corner. I'm quite sure that knowing Bill Mahoney, he was my assistant coach in Washington, that he probably said to his players after that first period, look, guys, you didn't pay to get in to see this game, so get out there and never mind the Stanley Cup champions, Evans and Oilers. Let's play hockey against them. Let's not get embarrassed. That goal came at 13.50 here of the second period. It's 4-4. Oilers on the attack is Jackson. Couldn't center it, and it's taken by Napier. Napier dropping it back to the goal for Hartsburg. 
Greg Hartsburg feeding it to Napier. Tipped ahead for Scott Bukestad, the rookie. Bukestad, number 14, puts on the brakes. Now shoots one and pure a glove save on Scott Bukestad, the rookie out of the University of Minnesota. 4-4 here in the second period, and you're watching USA Sports. Shotgun Rapids, Idaho, and old Milwaukee books mean something great to these guys. The shotgun means white water at its best. And old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden, old Milwaukee light. And old Milwaukee. And old Milwaukee light. Taste this great as their name. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than that. Some kind of a hockey game, Gary Green. 3 nothing at one time, Edmonton. Now 4-4. Four, four. They have a makings of a barn burner. Well, I just wonder if I was Grant Fuhr right now, I'd be questioning where all my players went to after that first period of play. They're not really helping out too much. Here's a uh, loose buck taken now by Roberts, who can't can, or clear it, and Pat Hughes gets it. Hughes trying to center to Cemento, but a good defensive play there by Gord Roberts to break it up. Now, Broughton, number seven, breaks up. Broughton shoots one and pure a save on a long, knee-high shot by Neil Broughton. How do you like this one, Al Strudwig? Well, Dan, I like it very much. You know, everybody here who follows hockey knows that in Minnesota and in Bloomington, Nanny is the professor. That's Lou Nanny, the vice president and general manager, and I'm really glad I'll be talking to him after the second period and not the first. We'll also take a look back at the big Oilers celebration back in May in Edmonton. In the meantime, as you said, I'm really uh, enjoying this one. He really works hard, Al Trevor, oh, yeah. doesn't he? Wouldn't you like to have a job like he's got? How do you get a job like that? <laughs> you have to be an ex-stick boy for the New York Islanders. They stop coming up in the Edmonton zone. 4-4, four, 4.36 four, four left in the second period. Here's Steve Payne for Minnesota, centering one, but it's intercepted, and Curry and Gretzky come to center on a two-on-two -two break. Giles takes Curry out of the play and snaps. Feeds it to Acton. Acton with Bellows and Payne, a three-on-two Minnesota break. Back to Bellows. Gretzky checked in. Bellows gets it again. Shoots high off the glass. And they're shooting them high and hard at Grant Fuhr. I think Fuhr would like to get the heck out of this game right now, the way the second period's gone for the Oilers. Here's Kevin Lowe and Acton jamming up in the corner. Bellows trying to get the puck. Cannot. Grushkulniski behind the goal. Checked by Acton. Now it's cleared around on the boards and it comes to Gretzky. Gretzky at center and here's Yeri Curry. Curry into Fogelin, shoots, and a save on the short side by Beaupre. Now Giles unable to clear it. And Acton and Bellows tie up Crucial Niski. And it's held there for a faceoff. We have 3.28 left in the second period. Edmonton 4, Minnesota 4. And a little bit of pushing and shoving. Well, some disagreements going on down in the corner. Maybe the Edmonton Oilers don't like being outshot the way they're being outshot this second period. And on the other hand, the North Stars may just be saying, well, we have tied this game up. It's a brand new hockey game. Maybe we will show a little authority and show the Oilers whose building this is here tonight. Oh, number 99 was in the middle of that. That's why the crowd gets so excited. And Wayne Gretzky is very perturbed at somebody. I can't remember the last time that the Oilers have had the play taken to them as they've had in this second period. Here's where it all started. Right there in the corner, number 12 of all guys, little Keith Acton. He put a body check into number four, Kevin Lowe. Some sticks started being exchanged, and here it goes again. Number 12, Keith Acton. Remember, I've called him Ying Yang before. Lee Fogelin just put Ying Yang right into the boards head first. You see that he obviously did not enjoy being pushed into the boards in such a manner. What's your nickname for him? Well, we called him Ying Yang. He played for me in Peterbilt, and they called him Ying Yang because he skated around just like a whirling dervish. He used to be a Canadian speed skating champion, in fact, and he's quite a team player, Dan. Harold Snaps has added some muscle to this Minnesota team. He looks fierce, doesn't he? He's got a 
think about that when you come down on a one-on-one -on -one situation against Harold Knepp. Meanwhile, Kirk Giles with a little cut across the bridge of his nose. Face-off coming up in the Minnesota zone. 328 left in the second period. Messier with Lindstrom and Anderson for Edmonton, but the North Stars with Lawton, Ashton, and Marouk get the puck, and Ashton feeds Marouk. Dennis Marouk closing in. Fakes it, lets it go. Fjord diving, save, rebound. And Ashton shot block. Penalty coming up to Edmonton. A drive by Marouk and a save by Fjord. And now a penalty to Edmonton. As the North Stars just about took the lead in this game. Dennis Marouk getting off an excellent shot. They're going to get a few more of those opportunities right now with number nine, Glenn Anderson, going to the penalty box. Let's see why, and let's see also where the North Stars almost scored. There you can see Fuhrer making a diving save twice, in fact. I, think, I don't think he stopped the second one. I think that was the defenseman that dove across. Then, well, there's then the another one. save on Marouk. I just wonder, Dan, the way that Fuhrer is going down right now a great deal, whether or not he is not hurting somewhat. Well, you're exactly correct. Don Jackson he slid made, across. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, your eyes have been... Did you go to an eye training school during the course of the summer? You are sharp. <laughs> you can't take all of that compliment. Don't you? know what to say. <laughs> you're blushing. You just... <laughs> Get the just camera on you. First nice thing that Troutwigger Green has ever said, and I don't know how to respond. <laughs> Here's Marouk. Tied up by Gretzky and the North Stars on the power play. Hartsburg a drive. Rebound, Marouk. Shot it just wide on his backhand. Edmonton with Solheim and Lawton in the corner. It comes to Broughton at the point. Over to Hartsburg. Back to Neil Broughton. Into Brian Lawton. Now to Ken Solheim. Centered Hartsburg shot block. And Charlie Huddy feeds it to Gretzky. Gretzky breaking away. Hartsburg steered him off. Now Gretzky to Huddy at the point. Shoots one. Shot it wide. Bounced right in front. Comes to Coffey. Paul Coffey a drive. Beaufray the save. Gretzky a whack at the rebound, but the North Stars come up with it. Hartsburg to Marouk. And now back of the play. Gretzky upended and an interference penalty. Called against Minnesota. And against Neil Broughton. It happened behind the play. Gretzky did not have the puck. Broughton took him out and gets an interference penalty. Dennis Morrell very alert on that play because that was way behind the play. Broughton doesn't look too happy, does he? Well, let's take a look at it. There's Broughton. The puck is way up now, almost at the red line. Well, now Dennis Marouk getting into a strap as we move back to the live action. And they're out of my view. I, I can't tell who. Uh, it's Kevin Lowe, I believe, the Edmonton defenseman. And Dennis Marouk. Interesting, Bill Mahoney was saying before the game that Dennis Marouk, he doesn't think, has ever played better. He's got uh, off to an excellent start during training camp. He's playing both ends of the rink. I think Dennis Marouk realized that he either had to play both ends of the rink or he wasn't going to become a North Star any longer. And as a result, Marouk has played extremely well. Here you see Kevin Lowe giving a few hand gestures to Dennis Marouk as Marouk comes into the penalty box. What's turned his uh, game around? He seems to have started to concentrate a little more on defense. Quite honestly, Dan, I think Dennis Marouk realized after being traded from Washington and the way he was slotted into this North Stars team that he wasn't expected just to score, that he also had a job to do back in his own end zone and in the checking department, and he was either going to have to do that or not play. They give minor penalties to Lowe and to Marouk. Just roughing minors, so each team will be two men short. Remember, already in the penalty box were two other players. So each team will be two men short and plenty of skating room now as it's three against three, excluding goaltenders. Broughton just got a penalty, and earlier Glenn Anderson had gone off for Edmonton. So each team two men short. Here's Hartsburg for Minnesota in this 4-4 game, dumping it in. Messier back to get it to Randy Gregg. 
Dr. Greg. At center ice to Jackson. Trying to move it in. Got it in front to Messier. Rolled near the goal. Let's say North Stars come up with it on Robert. Steve Bellow. Bellows ridden out by Greg and Jackson gets the puck. Number 29, Don Jackson to Randy Greg. Drops it to Jackson, back to Greg. Roberts intercepts, couldn't clear it. Now Messier all alone, and Beaupre beat him with a pad save. Here's Greg at the point. Got it behind the net, Hartsburg coming up with it. To Roberts. Roberts circling back, gives it to Giles. Kurt Giles, long shot, glove saved by Pure. And Coffee starts back for Edmonton. Edmonton with a brief power play here, four against three. Here's Gretzky to Huddy for in the final minute of the second period. Now Coffey. Over to the other point, Gretzky shoots, full play the save. And Keith Acton clears the rebound away. Gretzky on this Edmonton power play. It's a four against three power play for the Oilers. Feeding it into Charlie Huddy. Back to Coffey who couldn't play it at the point. Has to go back. 30 seconds left. Oilers flip it in. Snap unable to clear it as he fell. And the puck winds up underneath a couple of players who fall along the boards on the near side. Johnny Beaupre very sharp in this second period of play. Just an excellent play that he made on Mark Messier right in front of that net area. Beaupre actually, he stood right up. He held his ground. He made sure that Messier made his move first. Here it is. Take a look. Messier's waiting. He's hoping that Beaupre will actually give him a little bit more room. You can see Beaupre's even got a little bit of help back in there behind his, his own area in that crease. The defenseman came back to make sure that he eliminated any extra room that Beaupre might have been giving to Messier, but Messier just couldn't find enough. There you see Marouk and Broughton in the penalty box. They have four seconds left, as does Kevin Lowe of the Oilers. Here's Roberts trying to clear one, does, just as the penalized players come back on. And Lowe gets the puck to Yerry Curry, number 17. Curry cleared it, it hit Kevin Lowe, and now Huddy fires it to center ice. A couple of seconds left as Roberts shoots it in, and the period comes to an end. Shots on goal in that wide open second period. 21 for the Minnesota North Stars, 10 for Edmonton in the game, 31 to 20 now for Minnesota. Coming up, you'll meet the general manager of the Minnesota North Stars, Lou Nanny. The score after two periods of play here in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Minnesota North Stars four, the Edmonton Oilers four. Our second intermission coming up in just a moment. Jennifer O'Neill has nothing to fear but fear itself. James Mason also stars in The Flower in His Mouth on the USA Movie at 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday.
In Columbia Pictures' new film, The Razor's Edge, Bill Murray, in his first dramatic role, travels to Paris to find himself. You, too, can find yourself in Paris when USA's Night Flight sends you on an all-expense-paid trip for two, courtesy of American Express. 250 runners-up win a copy of The Razor's Edge from Penguin Books. To enter, send a postcard with your name, address, age, and phone number to The Razor's Edge, P.O. Box USA, Glen Rock, New Jersey, 07452. Deadline is November 2nd. Enter now, and you've got The Edge. Make a date for Marital Mania as two of television's funniest half-hours couple up Sundays on USA. Love conquers all, even different backgrounds and crazy in-laws when Bridget loves Bernie. Then, modern marriage gets the once-over from Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. They're a perfect match. Bridget loves Bernie at Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, only on the USA Network, starting at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, Sunday. They've dimmed the lights at the Met Center to allow the crowd to cool off just a bit. A wild second period of hockey. Minnesota outscoring Edmonton 3-1 and tying the game at 4-4. And you talk about two different games between the first and second period. So evident tonight. I'm Al Troutwick back in our studio here at the Met Center. Joining me, the vice president and general manager of the North Stars, Lou Nanny. Lou, boy, that game after the first period, if I had you in here, you might have been upset. But now you have a chance to smile a little bit. Well, we've had a lot of those, you know. Uh, over the past few years, it seems every time we come to Minnesota, we've had closer games, 3-2 uh, games, 4-3. We'd go to Edmonton, we'd have shootouts. Last year, for instance, we had a 12-8 game in Edmonton, which tied the all-time record for most goals scored in a game. What was the challenge for you to get ready for this season? Is it still to compete in the Norris Division, or do you look past a little bit, to be honest with me now, to Edmonton and beating them eventually? Well, if you're in professional hockey and if you think you've got a reasonably good team, your objective always got to be the, to be the best. Our objective is to win the cup. First of all, you always make short-range goals, and we want to win our division. From there on, we want to go and win our conference. Then we want to win the cup, but uh, we're never going to be satisfied unless we win the cup. That's what it's all about, and that's what we're after, and we know it's tough, and you see a team like Edmonton, it could be a long time, but hopefully we're going to be capable of doing it. Is a season a failure if you don't win the cup? Well, it's a failure as far as your goals uh, professionally go in hockey. Uh, it could be... Uh, success if you look at uh, how you do at the gate if you're we're two different things one we're a business we're an entertainment business if we do well if we make money we're a success in that way but if we don't win we're still a failure as far as I'm concerned because the object is to win that's what we're here for that's what it's all about Lou, the offseason publicity from the North Star standpoint uh, was fairly negative it seemed like a lot of players were bickering you had uh, Dino Cicerelli complaining Al McAdam wanted to get out of here he got his wish how, how much tr truth was there in the stories, and how did it affect the team? Well, any team has always got some people th that are dissatisfied with their situation. If you look back right now to the World Series, Willie Hernandez, who's an outstanding pitcher for the Tigers, says he wants more money, he wants out. Champ Summers from San Diego wanted out, he wanted to play more. Any team has that, but we just don't stop our players from saying what they want. If they, if they feel certain things, they say it to the press, we don't stifle it. We only had two. Dino never wanted to leave, he never asked me to be traded. McAdam did, he's gone. But uh, for the most part, as Harold Sneff said in the paper, I've heard a lot of stuff about this team uh, having divergent personalities, but he says, I've never been on a closer in the team. He says, uh, it's just uh, ill founded remarks, and sometimes I think it's irresponsible journalism because people don't really look into it and see if it's any different than any other club. And we only have a few seconds. The Dino Cicerelli situation was resolved, I believe, at least temporarily in a very unique way. Tell me about this. Well, uh, his, you're talking about his contract. That was a year before Dino had a, a contract that uh, he wanted to be paid like the better goal scorers in the league, and we worked out a certain bonus system that would enable him to do that. But he had to hit certain levels through the course of his contract. Unfortunately, he missed once by only two goals, and it seemed like it put a lot of pressure on him. He finally consented to come back and do things like uh, the rest of the club does, and we, we give our players incentive on a team level, and that's what he's on now. All right, so now he's getting along with Bill Mahoney. Well, he is, and, and he was uh, shown that he had as much more ice time than he thought, and things have worked out. He had a good talk with him, and everything's happy. But we don't mind people wanting to play more or play better. That's what the object is, to be as good as you can and play as much as you can and be a star. And, and we like those kind of guys that keep searching the ways to become the best there is. All right, Lou, thanks very much. Vice President, General Manager of the Minnesota North Stars, and quite a successful man. He is Lou Nanny.
has been our guest in between periods. A look back in time to the very first professional hockey league. It was located in the United States, surprisingly, and not in Canada. It was 1904, and it included the cities of St. Paul, Minnesota, not too far from here, Sault Ste. Marie in Michigan, St. Louis, Missouri, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Incidentally, that's where Dan Kelly began his career back in 1904 with that uh, hockey team in St. Louis, Missouri. And he continues today. What a job he does. We'll be back with more of the Wall Street Journal Late News and an Oilers retrospective in a moment. Now there's an easier way for you to keep up with all the latest in news, sports, money, and life. It's USA Today delivered right to your home or office every day. And when you subscribe, look at all you'll get. A whole new way. USA Today. USA Today, the nation's newspaper. At home or at the office, it brings you all the news from around the corner and around the country in four colorful sections. News, sports, money, life. USA Today. Exciting, rewarding, fascinating, vital. USA brings you the USA. USA Today. Via satellite from the nation's capital right to your door. Call now and you can have it delivered at this special introductory price. Order 13 weeks at our regular rate and you'll get an additional two weeks free. That's 15 weeks, 75 issues, all for just $22.75. But you must act now. This deal won't last forever. Plus, if you call now with your paid subscription, you'll also get this matching USA Today t-shirt and cap <laughs> free. Just call 1-800-453-2900 to start delivery of USA Today. That's 1-800-453-2900 to get USA Today. The newspaper of tomorrow is here today. USA Today, the nation's most colorful and most comprehensive newspaper. News covering the nation from every state. Money, how to make it, how to spend it. Sports, all the results from everywhere. And life, the talk, the trends, and what's worth trying. USA Today brings you the USA. Now's the time to act. Get USA Today and your matching t-shirt and cap free. Call now. I'm Al Troutwick welcoming you back to the Met Center in Bloomington. We continue live with a score tied 4-4 between the Edmonton Oilers and the Minnesota North Stars. Remember, the Oilers got out to a 3-0 lead in this game. Right now, the Wall Street Journal Late News, and then we'll be back. Oil prices plunge lower. That story and more next. The Wall Street Journal Late News with William Bruce, brought to you by United Airlines. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. Good evening, everyone. Consumers may soon see lower fuel bills. Oil markets are in turmoil and prices are plunging following cuts by Britain and Norway. At least one analyst says OPEC will cut prices, possibly even before its emergency meeting later this month. But if OPEC seeks production cuts, Britain, for one, says it won't go along. Meanwhile, airline stocks took off today because cheaper fuel would mean big savings. Gerber Products is recalling more than a half million jars of apple plum and apple cherry juice in 15 northeast and midwest states. Fragments of glass were found in three jars. And Coca-Cola reports effervescent profits last quarter on strong soft drink sales and a healthy showing from its Columbia Pictures subsidiary. A big day on Wall Street with the Dow posting its biggest gain in two months. Sometimes, in United's friendly skies, it's best to do nothing at all. Morning. I was up all night getting ready for a meeting. You have about two hours to relax. Now this is all I want. There's a Do Not Disturb sign on 24-H. Flying high across the land, we're giving you everything we can. We've got more to give along the way. You're not just flying. Thanks. Great flight. It was nothing. Fly in the friendly skies. If you call the IRS next year looking for your refund check, you may talk to a computer. A synthesized voice will tell you if your check is in the mail or will refer you elsewhere if there's a problem. And while it may not get big TV coverage, there's an Olympics next fall in Japan that tests blue-collar skills. Competitors from 18 countries will compete in events like house wiring, welding, and plumbing. For the Wall Street Journal, I'm William Bruce. I see by your resume you're applying for the job as our office copier. Gentlemen, meet the meter 312, Ari Carpia. 
You don't mind if we just see what you can do. He's fast. Three copies a minute. He reduces, enlarges, copies on two sides. There's a feeder. Sorter. And a self-diagnostic control system. Hmm, he's got everything we need, but I bet he'll cost us. Is that all? So, when did you say you could start? Ask your meter man. Meta full service copiers. And from the intensity of Wall Street, we're going to take you back a few months to Edmonton, Alberta. Edmonton, if you've never been there, is a very quiet town. It's very clean. It's very pretty. The people are very nice. But boy, just a few months ago, they had a very, very big reason to celebrate. It was the biggest, noisiest, most emotion-filled parade ever in the history of the city of Edmonton, Alberta. Not since 1979 had the Stanley Cup made its home in Canada and never had it ventured further west than Toronto. The nearly 150,000 people who packed the City Hall area in downtown savored the most memorable sports moments in Edmonton history. City of Edmonton, it's probably the biggest thing that's ever happened in that sports city. Uh, the football team in Canada, the Edmonton Eskimos, rather than Edmonton, uh, uh, have been a very successful franchise. And they've won the, the Grey Cup, which is uh, the the trophy for the for the championship in Canada. Uh, it's it's similar to the Super Bowl, and they've won it five times in a row. But the Edmonton Oilers win the Stanley Cup, and it's a, it's a bigger success. So that sort of tells you what the city of Edmonton feels about the Stanley Cup. In 1979, owner Peter Pocklington predicted the Oilers would win the Cup in five years' time. His prediction for a Stanley Cup came true, but the city's overwhelming celebration was more than expected. If you drive around Edmonton now, you see uh, a lot of signs that have been put up by the city. It says City of Champions, and then it's got the Edmonton Oilers logo on it. But... I think that uh, we'll have to wait and see how it affects the team. The... The team, after winning something like the Stanley Cup, seems to take a little while to adjust and probably to reset their, their sights on what they want to do this year and reevaluate some of the things they did over the summer. So we'll have to wait and see how they're affected by it. It was bedlam on the ice back there in May, and it was delirium on the streets a few days later. Now it's all quiet on 118th Street, where the Oilers tend to business. Are they ready to do it all again? We see that teams want to beat us. Uh, every time we're going to go out on the ice this season, uh, teams are going to want to prove that they're as good as us or better than us. So we have to be prepared for that sort of thing. I think in the long run, it'll make us a better hockey team. But uh, we have some maturing to do. We have to, be, we have to realize that we're going to be faced to, with that situation. I think that the players will adjust. They know, they know the job that's required and what it takes to win. And, and perhaps that side will make it a little bit easier for them. Sounds like there's a bear in the beer. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Where's he going? He's going to get that beer from that bear. That's not just a bear. That's a grizzly. Yeah. But that's not just a beer. That's fire brewed strohs. I thought we had three cases. Well, <laughs> had to make a deal. Strohs and Strohlite fire brewed for smoother taste. Where else can you see great performances like these? Get an appreciation of the fine arts. Where can you witness high drama? And enjoy all-round quality entertainment. Right here on The Gong Show. Uh, are you in for a treat? Weekdays at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on the USA Network. On the next Seeing Stars, country and family are two important words to Academy Award winner Jessica Lange. On our next show, discover why she left Hollywood for the country and why she brought the movie Country to the big screen. Then see how Hollywood recreated a legend with The Bear, the story of Alabama football coach Paul Bear Bryant. And preview Crimes of Passion, the most controversial movie of the year. I'm Jim Finnerty. Join me for Seeing Stars. At 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific Saturday.
We are back live in Bloomington, Minnesota, where after two periods of play, it's the Edmonton Oilers four, the Minnesota North Stars four. Scoring summary in the second period. Payne for Minnesota at 4.52. Then Anderson for Edmonton at 7.12 to give the Oilers a 4-2 lead. But then two in a row by Minnesota. Solheim at 8.23. And then Dennis Farouk at 13.50. Shots on goal, as we told you. 21-10 in that second period, favoring Minnesota. The NHL on USA is brought to you by Honda, makers of the prelude. Gary Green, I can't believe the second period, and as a matter of fact, the first two periods I've just witnessed, this has been Stanley Cup-type playoff action we've watched here today, and it's only October. It really has been outstanding hockey, Dan. I think the great thing in watching these two teams, they're two of the fastest teams in the NHL. I think anyone would consider that Edmonton are probably the fastest, but Minnesota North Stars have always been known for their skating abilities. It really showed that second period. What do you forecast for the third? I really think that the North Stars have to come out right from the drop of the puck and go right at the Edmonton Oilers. If they lay back and play the least bit defensively, then that gives the Oilers the opportunity to get their momentum going, something that John Muckler, I am sure, is talking to his club about right now. Bill Mahoney does not want to lay back. They do not have a big lead. It's a tied game, brand new. They've got to really take it to the Oilers. Edmonton for Minnesota for and here we go at the third period Kevin Lowe for Edmonton to Glenn Anderson number nine Anderson giving it back to Lowe as the Oilers now clear it to center Anderson speeds in after it that's a shot go Beaupre the save he wasn't sure he had it for a moment but he did and then held on to it and we'll have a face off in the Minnesota zone as we look at Mark Messier who's Looking for his first goal of the season tonight. Well, the Oilers got a good opportunity right off the bat, Dan, and that is because some of the swirling that was going on by the North Stars in the neutral ice area actually opened up that right wing corridor for the Oilers, and they took advantage of it. You cannot give the Oilers open ice because, boy, they can smell it, and they'll take advantage. Now the Oilers send out a new line, Gretzky with Crucial Niski and Yari Curry. And Edmonton respond, or at least Minnesota respond. Acton coming out to take this face-off. Interesting, they're having Crucial Niski take many of the face-offs rather than Gretzky. That is interesting. I think right now that they must consider that Crucial Niski is perhaps a little bit better than Gretzky. It's never been one of Wayne's fortes. Oilers get it to Jackson at the left point. Stick saved by Beaupre. Roberts tried to clear it. Jackson held it in. Another stick saved by Beaupre. Number 44, Steve Payne. Long pass ahead to Acton. Keith Acton centers one. It goes to the corner. Payne at a bad angle. Shoots anyway. Fewer the save. Now Fewer out of the net. Gooden grabbed that loose puck. And the Oilers, Gary Curry, shot it to center. Bob Rouse fires it over to Roberts, who cleared it into the Edmonton zone. Oilers shoot it right back out. This is Gretzky. Centered one, and Bob Rouse, the 20-year-old rookie, intercepts. He comes to center. Rouse leaving it for Cicerelli. He couldn't handle it, and Gretzky starts back. Shot went off of Rouse wide of the net. Now it is Big Snips trying to clear it. Did get it behind the net for Rouse. Cleared to Solheim. He's checked in the play. Solheim gets it again to Cicerelli. Cicerelli dumping it into the Edmonton zone. Back of the net, Cicerelli gets it himself. Tried to stuff it in, couldn't. Solheim to snip. A drive deflected. Fuhr the save, and he smothered it. Harold Snips getting a good low shot right along that ice, giving Cicerelli the opportunity and Broughton to get in front of Fuhr, try to poke it in, get some deflections or rebounds. Take a look at it. There you can see that Snips is in good position. Watch the way Cicerelli, right in front of that net. He's watching. He's got his back to Fuhr. There's another chance from the faceoff for Edmonton, or for Minnesota. Fuhr had to make the save. Hartsburg at the point. Centers to Bukestad. Couldn't get the shot away. 
And Edmonton start back with the rookie Sherbet. Flipping it through. McClellan couldn't catch up with it. Brent Ashton got it as far as center. McClellan takes over and the Oilers drop it to Paul Coffey. Rink wide to Huddy. Number 22 is Charlie Huddy. Shoots it into the North Star zone. Beaufre leaves it for Snaps. Snaps to Ashton on the right wing side. Ashton shot at the center and Paul Coffey has it there. Sherbin uses the boards to shoot it in. 30-year-old veteran Harold Snaps, the former Canuck. To Marouk, back to Snaps, number 28. Bounces one wide of the net. And Lee Fogelin for Edmonton takes over and clears the center ice. And the orders just fire it down the ice. Bellows going back. Ryan Bellows lost it to Gretzky. Gretzky to Fogelin. His shot blocked in front of the net by Giles. And Minnesota come to center. Acton to Payne. Couldn't get around the defense and Edmonton come right back. Curry with Gretzky. Curry shot. Blocked at the defense by Randy Belichick, who clears it down the ice. I'm sure in this period you'll see a lot of Gretzky's line and Messier's line. The Oilers do not want to give the Minnesota North Stars any confidence, any knowledge or whatsoever that they could beat them this year. Keep them down. Gretzky is on the ice now to Jackson. Jackson tries to center one. Puck goes to the corner and Giles, number two, clears the zone. Grant Fuhrer out of the net to clear it back up ice. Gretzky has it. Tried to tip it back to Glenn Anderson. That's intercepted and Roberts now feeding it ahead on right wing. Lindstrom intercepts that to Jackson. Over to Randy Gregg. Tried to clear it in. Cicerelli knocks it down. Gets it into the Edmonton zone. Jackson there to clear it to Lindstrom. Now Messier couldn't get it out. Solheim shot blocked. And Lindstrom comes to center, but was poke checked by Roberts. Now Anderson. Anderson around the defense. Gets it in front. Lindstrom a backhander. Blocked by Gordy Roberts, the Minnesota defenseman. And the North Stars come back. Solheim with a long shot and a stick save by Grant Fuhr. Messier. Lead pass at center to Lindstrom. Lindstrom to Glenn Anderson. Anderson centered. Brent Ashton there to intercept. Number 17, Ashton. Long bouncer. Fuhr handles it. Clear to the side. It's over onto the boards. Now in Messier. Handed it right to Brian Lawton, who shot it into the corner. And Charlie Huddy gets it. He gives it to Coffey. Coffey cleared to center. Snaps has it there to Craig Hartsburg. Hartsburg's long pass for Lawton off the mark. Goes the length of the ice, and it's icing called against Minnesota. Coast-to-coast -coast coverage of the NHL is right here on USA. Here's another bold move by the Cavalry. Kemper's innovative budget payment plan for auto, home, or business insurance. Nothing beats it for convenience. Kemper frees you from heavy payments, lets you combine your auto, home, even business insurance into just one payment each month. Now, quality protection is easier to come by when you call the Cavalry. Once you compare Kemper, you'll ride with us. 14 minutes and 47 seconds left in regulation time. Edmonton 4, Minnesota 4. Face off in the North Star zone, won by Edmonton. Hunter getting it in behind the net, but Craig Hartsburg flips it around to Dennis Farouk. Now to Ashton. Ashton gets it into the Edmonton zone. Fogelin and Bukestead fight for it. Now Kevin Lowe trying to clear it. Here's Bukestead in front to Marouk. Back to the point. Shot goes wide as Snips let it go. Marouk again. Tries to center, can't. And Hunter headmans it to Sherbin, the rookie. In across the line, but offside at the Minnesota blue line as you look at the North Star bench. Some final scores now in at Hartford. The Whalers defeat Detroit 7-3.
Montreal and Los Angeles a 3-3 overtime tie. Los Angeles at one time led their 3-0. And Philadelphia, 13-2 victors over Vancouver. We'll be at the Spectrum in Philadelphia next week on USA. St. Louis and the Flyers, 7.30 next Thursday night, Eastern Time. 13 goals for the Philadelphia Flyers. It'll be a tough night for sleeping for Bill LaForge, the new coach of the Vancouver Canucks. Attendance here tonight, 14,279. They seat around 15,000 at the Met Center. Gordy Roberts for the North Stars. Shooting one, and he flipped it up over the glass into the crowd. Sin nope. Dan Sinisello and Prop both had hat tricks in that game tonight. 58 shots on net by the Philadelphia Flyers. We will be there, as Dan mentioned, next Thursday night. Steve Payne, number 44. He sent Minnesota into the Campbell Conference Final with an overtime goal that eliminated St. Louis in a seventh and deciding game last year. And then the order swept Minnesota four straight. But the North Stars have bounced back from a 3-0 deficit here tonight, and we have an excellent game. It's 4-4 as a long shot is dumped in by Bob Rouse. Paul Coffey back for Edmonton. Clearing one to Yerry Curry. Curry now dropping it to Huddy. Cleared outside the zone and Bellows. Checked by Curry. His pass to Crucial Niski, who shot it in, and Roberts takes over, flipping it to Acton. Acton too well checked by Crucial Niski. And here's Coffey for Edmonton. Number seven, Coffey, a shot right on. Mopray the save. Roberts head manning it to Bellows. Bellows ridden out by Yerry Curry. Bellows centered it across the ice. Nobody there, and Coffey for Edmonton. Shoots it off the boards with Fred Hartsburg back after it. Hartsburg to Broughton. Neil Broughton bumped by Jackson. And now it is Edmonton on the attack. It's Gretzky to Curry to Jackson. Weak shot. Beaupre handles that. And Kirk Giles cleared it. Dr. Randy Gregg held it in. Slap shot wide by a couple of feet. At the other point, Lindstrom shot to flex wide. Kurt Giles clearing one. And now Broughton pokes at the center ice to Steve Payne. Payne to Cicerelli right in. Fewer a sprawling save. Rebound. This one stopped by Randy Gregg. Here's Cicerelli. Another save by Fewer. And Gretzky comes up with the puck. Anderson now clearing it as the puck bounces into the Minnesota zone. Three great chances for Minnesota. Well, Grant Fuhrer sprawling out of the net, but Randy Gregg, not a bad goaltender, is he? He saved one of them. Here's Messier. What team, what speed these two teams have. Messier digging in. Now Anderson in the corner. Roberts checks in, cleared at the center. Kevin Lowe back after it. Low over to Lee Fogler. Now to Messier. The rookie Bukestead tied him up, and Gordy Roberts has it for the North Stars. Rink wide to Bob Rouse, number three. Now at center, here's Aston. Aston tried to get it through for Solheim, couldn't. And back comes Edmonton. Sherman's pass over to Anderson, his shot blocked. And Minnesota on the attack again. Scott Bukestad couldn't get around the only man back who was an Edmonton defender, Charlie Huddy. Maruk clearing it in. Number 22, Huddy has to go back again. Huddy giving it to Coffey. Oilers trying to clear it out of their own zone. Huddy comes to center. And now it's shot into the Minnesota zone offside. Right through the Stanley Cup final. It's the National Hockey League on USA Sports. We'll be right back. What a bummer. Another engine we can't mess up. How could Mobile do this to me? Yeah. Make their super unleaded gasoline that good. It's really powerful. High octane is so... 
Knocking and pinging is becoming a lost art. Yeah. I just hope nobody else finds out how good their gasoline is. How could they find out? Mogul could make a television commercial. Nah! nah. With Gary Green and Al Troutwig, Dan Kelly with you. Ten minutes, 53 seconds left in regulation time. Edmonton four, Minnesota four. Puck is cleared in. Beaupre trying to shoot it out. Sherbin, the rookie, holds it in for Edmonton. Then he's knocked down behind the net. Hunter getting it loose to McClellan. Back to the point. Huddy fired it into the corner. Beaupre cleared it away. Sherbin now drops it back to the point. Copy shot block. And a break for Marouk. Dennis Marouk shoots and pure a stick save. Rebound. Pure stop that too. Off of Mark Napier. And Pure at this point is holding Edmonton in the game. Dennis Marouk looks like a pretty good left winger out there tonight. Dan, I think that he has played admirably, as has Mark Napier on that right wing. Now Lawton couldn't get around the defense, and back comes Gretzky. Gretzky trying to slip it through, but the play goes offside as over on the right side, Pat Hughes was in ahead of the play at the Minnesota blue line number of times tonight Grant Fuhr has had to come up with not only the first save but actually the second and third save right after the initial onslaught that tells you something especially in the second and third period that maybe his defense just have not been quite so alert there's that first sprawl you can see that Lit Lindstrom went crashing right over top of Fuhr but that's when Randy Gregg made that great save as the goaltender but Fuhr's back in the net again some real dazzling moves there by Fuhrer. And that's not the last uh, chances. That was a few minutes ago. But some great opportunities there for Minnesota. Up shot down the ice by the North Stars. This will be an icing call. By the way, Minnesota at this point has had 41 shots on goal to Edmonton's 24. I don't know how to respond to that, Dan, because after the first period of play, it really looked quite evident that the Stanley Cup Defending champions, anyway, we're going to take it to the North Stars, but the North Stars really turned things around at the start of the second period. They were a determined hockey club and have not let up yet. Face off coming up, Scott Bukestead against Mark Messier. Bukestead out of the University of Minnesota, played for the United States Olympic team last year. He's a native of New Brighton, Minnesota, a suburb of St. Paul. Puck on the board, shot in, and Roberts gets it to Giles. Giles clearing one off an Edmonton player to the Oiler end of the rink, and Kevin Lowe is back after it. Lowe to Anderson. Now to Messier. Messier. Knocked down by Roberts. Puck comes to the point. A shot there by Fogelin off the side of the net. Oilers try and hold it in. Roberts takes it away from Messier and Gord Roberts a good move to work at the center to Brent Ashton. Ashton firing it in. Now back of the net. Fogler. Long pass at center. And it's called back on a two-line offside pass. For our local systems, we'll pause here. You're watching the NHL, and it's 4-4 Edmonton and Minnesota. The USA Network presents a special event, Evita Peron, the true story of a woman's willful struggle to be somebody, no matter what. She loved one man. If you do what I say, no man in Argentina would touch you. She seduced a nation. I have a terrible longing to leave something behind. James Farantino stars with Faye Dunaway as Evita Peron, a special two-part USA premiere event at 8 p.m. Eastern, October 28th and 29th. Minnesota on the attack as they drop it back to the point. Rouse is shot. Fewer the save. Rebound. And on that play, they had the puck in behind the goaltender. But Huddy stopped it. And that's two stops that Grant Fuhrer's defense has made. Huddy there stopped Brian Bellows on what seemed to be a sure goal. There are the honors shooting his crucial Niski, and he put it high. Bellows coming up with the puck for Minnesota. Bellows flipped it, but not out. Held in by the other center to Gretzky, and he shot it just wide. Now a loose puck behind the net. Snap's trying to clear it. 
Will Solniski to Yeri Curry in the corner. Keith Acton comes back to help up. Flipping it on the boards, and here is Bellows, number 23. Bellows leaves it for Payne. Back to Bellows. Trying to get it back in front of the net. Coffee knocked it down. Seven and a half minutes left in regulation time. Four for the score. Here's a centering pass for Sherman. His shot blocked. Cicerelli failed to clear it. Gretzky shoots. He scores! Gretzky, his third of the night, and Edmonton takes the lead. Cicerelli had a chance to clear it out and failed to do so. And it results in an Edmonton goal by Gretzky. Big giveaway right in your own end zone. Now, that's just the wrong guy to have the puck in the slot area. Can't blame Donnie Beaupre. He may have gone down a little too soon, but nevertheless, look at all the players in front of him. There's number 99. One, two, three, four, five players in front of Beaupre. How are you supposed to see the puck when you've got that many players in front of you? Gretzky's third of the night is sixth of the season, and Edmonton has a 5-4 lead, despite having been outplayed by Minnesota. Now Solheim for the North Stars, trying to move around the defense. Lowe is there to clear it away. McClellan trying to clear it for Hunter. Now McClellan centers one, and Cicerelli gives it to Roberts. Now to Solheim. Using the poke check was Kevin Lowe, and Hunter starts back for Edmonton. He flips it in. Oilers try and send two men into forecheck. It succeeds as Lindstrom had the puck, but then he immediately lost it and a stoppage in play. Gretzky unassisted the scoring play. 12.43 the time. Gretzky's sixth of the year, and it's 5-4 Edmonton. We have six and a half minutes left, and we'll be right back on USA. Can you believe it, JT, with an $18 million contract? Sure is a long way from the playground. Think he still drinks strolls? Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. JT, hey, Mr. Hey. Hey. Richard. Timothy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Man. Oh. This is all right. Glad he didn't forget his friends. Oh, it's strolls. Where is the strolls? Out by the pool. The, the pool? pool? Strolls and stroll lights. Now that's a cooler. <laughs> Fire brewed for smoother taste. Here we are back in Minnesota as Don Jackson shot wide of the net. Brent Ashton starting back for Minnesota. His shot wide of the goal. And now Glenn Anderson trying to clear it. Gets it to Messier. Back to Anderson. As Anderson, number nine, moves into the Minnesota zone. Centered it to Lindstrom. And Beaupre came out and made a big save. Buck is then cleared. Jackson is there to knock it away. Messier couldn't get around Kirk Giles. And the North Stars, who have fallen behind 5-4, to four, couldn't clear it in. Here's Messier. Mark Messier stick handling in. Check to Napier. Drops it to Giles. Now to Ashton, number 17. Brent Ashton, the former New Jersey Devil. Check from behind, and Anderson flips it ahead. Here's Curry moving in with Gretzky. Curry dropping it to Huddy. Shoots one, Beaupre the save. As instead of going in front of the net, Curry made a very alert back pass to Huddy, and Beaupre had to make a good save. There you see Wayne Gretzky. A little trivia for you. How many career hat tricks is the hat trick that Gretzky has tonight bring his career total to? Well, I'm going to make a guess, Dan. You're going to Maybe. say 29. <laughs> I was going to say exactly 29. How did you know that? You're brilliant. I know that. You I tell you, you're not just getting older, you're getting better. They tell me it's also Gretzky's fifth career hat trick against Minnesota. Now 29 hat tricks. And this is Gretzky's seventh year in the NHL. There's Keith Acton. The North Stars have fallen behind. Centered one. And a good save there by Beaupre on Yari Curry, who was left open at the side of the net. When many players retire, they will think back to the night that they may have scored a hat trick. That would be a little difficult for Wayne Gretzky to think back because I'm sure it may be just one big blur when you score that many in that short of years. It almost becomes a every week routine. 
518 to play in the third period. Five to four, Edmonton leading. Big faceoff coming up. Crucial Niski will take the draw against Keith Acton when they resume play. The North Stars have outshot Edmonton 44 to 28, but the Oilers lead 5-4. Now Bellows, who had a great chance earlier to give the Oilers the lead, but was stopped by Charlie Huddy. Now back comes Bellows. Into Acton, shoots once, you're the save, they rebound. They score! Brian Bellows on the rebound. There you see it. Bellows putting that puck in on the rebound. You know, right when the North Stars needed the spark the most, they got it. It's of no surprise they got it from Brian Bellows. He is becoming very fast, the leader of the North Stars. Tremendous talent, and he showed some of it right there. Brian Bellows has just tied this game up at five apiece. Bellows has the puck again, giving it to Acton. Acton over to Steve Payne. Payne flipping it in, pure stop that. Action in behind the goal to try and get it. Shot around on the board. Held in by Ralph for Minnesota, but now Edmonton. Clear one to center. And here's Curry with Gretzky. Gretzky couldn't get around the defense. And Gordy Roberts flips it away. Now Paul Coffey for Edmonton. Long shot. Beaupre the save. Kurt Giles back to get it. Giles over to Roberts. Gordy Roberts working it to Ashton, who dumps it in. Fewer sets it up behind the net, and Kevin Lowe cleared it away. Now Hunter racing after a loose puck. Her Giles beat him to it. Cleared it. Here's McClellan at a bad angle trying to get it in front. Giles feeds it up ice to Marouk. Dennis Marouk shoots one. Love save by Fewer. Marouk really teed off on that rising slap shot. Aston at center ice, checking the rookie Sherbin. Flips it back into the Edmonton zone. Sherbin trying to clear it. Hartsburg knocked it down. It comes right back to Sherbin. And now it's called back on a hand pass from one teammate to another. For our local systems, we'll pause now. It's the NHL on USA. Berlin, a USA premiere event at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific, Monday, October 29th. Grant Fuhr, the Edmonton goaltender. That last scoring play for Minnesota. Bellows from Acton and Hartsburg, 1457 the time. Bellows third of the year, a 5-5 game. Remember, we'd have a five-minute sudden death overtime if it's tied at the end of regulation play. Here's Messier for Edmonton. Messier moving in. Couldn't get around the defense. And now it's shot to center ice by the North Star. Don Jackson has it there. Harold Schnepps breaks it up at the Edmonton line. It's cleared in and both right back to the net. Leaving it for number three, Bob Ralph. Trying to clear it. Greg knocks it down. His shot blocked. Now they get it behind the net. Messier was wide open in front, but an intercepted pass by Harold Snaps broke it up. Now Jackson, as the Oilers attack, they clear it into the Minnesota zone. Shot wide of the net, and Giles has it there. And as he cleared it, it goes over the glass and into the crowd. Live National Hockey League action from coast to coast is only on USA Sports. Hey, little guy, let's you and me watch a movie get cuddly. We'll bring along the cookie jar. Won't tell anybody where we are. There's no place like HBO. We'll make your spirit shine. Your evening's glow. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, what a show. There's no place like HBO.
flashes of overtime in our heads right now with a score tied at five. But if the game does end, we'll be back here with an MVP at the end of the game. Who is it? Beaupre, Fuhr, Neil Broughton? Let's find out from Gary and Dan. We are back in the final three minutes of regulation time. A centering pass intercepted by Edmonton and now Crucial Niski for the Oilers. Shoots a bouncer in. Beaupre stopped that and Giles. Now clears one and right back comes Acton to Bellows. Bellows checked by Coffey on the play. Buck cleared away and Roberts has it for Minnesota. Gordy Roberts in across the line but Acton was offside on the play. He tried to stay at the blue line but could not. You know we talked about Minnesota and we talked earlier about the numerous injuries in the league. Six players are out of the Minnesota lineup including four defensemen. Tom Hirsch, Brad Maxwell, Dan Mandich and Dave Richter also out are veterans Willie Platt and Paul Holmgren so they have their share of injuries. They sure do and you take Holmgren and Platt out of the lineup Dan and that takes away a lot of your four checking abilities a lot of the corner work so they've played extremely well here tonight and they may win this hockey game yet. There's the chance for Sherbin the Edmonton rookie long shot will play a glove save. There's it in the roof flips it out on the on the left wing side. Payne a pass over to Ashton. Or Duke did who gave it to Ashton. Broken up by Kevin Lowe. Now Hunter for Edmonton out of his own zone. Number 12, Dave Hunter. Holding it in, but Hartsburg intercepts his pass. And Craig Hartsburg working at the center ice to Maroof. Maroof flips one in. Going back is Jackson. Don Jackson for Edmonton. Jackson clearing one. Long pass at center for McClellan. Cleared in and Cicerelli goes back. Cicerelli with a minute seven left in the third period. Clearing it to center. And then Randy Gregg is back for Edmonton. A minute left as he gets it to Messier. Now to Lindstrom. Ahead to Glenn Anderson. Anderson for the orders. Barging in. Glenn Anderson right hand shoots. Full play of the save. They score! Glenn Anderson with speed and muscle. And Don Beaupre is all over the referee Morrell. He doesn't think that goal should be allowed. We have had a few questionable goals tonight. Many more than we usually would have in a couple of weeks. But take a look at this one. Just the tremendous speed of number nine, Glenn Anderson, going down those right wing boards. Watch the way he cuts in and watch the puck. There you can see. It was sliding over that goal line. It appears from that angle that it did indeed go over that red goal line. Take a look again. Tough to tell. Beaupre's body totally in front of from that angle. It appears as though they have definitely given that goal to Glenn Anderson. Anderson with tremendous speed, tremendous strength. And I think that Beaupre in reaching back may have put that goal in himself and it's six to five Edmonton it comes with 48 seconds left from the face off the puck back into the Edmonton zone and Craig Hartsburg is back after it shooting it around on the board Anderson does get the goal. Here are the orders on the attack again. Crucial Niski has shot. Beaupre stops that. And the North Stars try and come back but cannot. Held in and a shot on goal by Crucial Niski. Now a chance for Gretzky in front of Crucial Niski. Backhanded it wide to the open side. Just 20 seconds left. Minnesota now break out. Acton has trouble with a bouncing pass. Keith Acton to center ice clearing it in. Puck in behind the goal. There's a chance, and Coffee comes up with it and has an open net to shoot at. Shoots, missed the net, but the game is over. And the Oilers win this game six to five. Meanwhile, Wayne Gretzky is chasing after Dennis Burrell, the referee, about something. But the game is over, and the Oilers win six to five here on a late goal by Glenn Anderson. His fourth of the season, his second of the night. Lindstrom the assist, 19-12 the time. Shots on goal in the game. Favored Minnesota, 47. 
to 33. But Edmonton wins the game. And Wayne Gretzky, whom you just saw, had a hat trick. A final score here in Bloomington, Minnesota. The Edmonton Oilers six, the Minnesota North Stars five. We'll be back in just a moment. In Columbia Pictures' new film, The Razor's Edge, Bill Murray, in his first dramatic role, travels to Paris to find himself. You, too, can find yourself in Paris when USA's Night Flight sends you on an all-expense-paid trip for two, courtesy of American Express. 250 runners-up win a copy of The Razor's Edge from Penguin Books. To enter, send a postcard with your name, address, age, and phone number to The Razor's Edge, P.O. Box, USA, Glen Rock, New Jersey, 07452. Deadline is November 2nd. Enter now, and you've got The Edge. In the 1890s, Sarah Cole started sneaking a smoke after tennis. Some 50 years later, her granddaughter was smoking in public. Today, Sarah's great-great-granddaughter learned the Surgeon General has reported there is a direct link between smoking and heart disease. Also, heart disease is America's number one health hazard from smoking. Now you've come a long way. You've quit. The American Heart Association, we're fighting for your life. This week on Saturday Nightmares, Satan's power is unleashed in a supernatural tale of terror. Fear no evil. Then, Ann Baxter and George Siegel pair up in a thriller with a twist. From Alfred Hitchcock, it's the best scare on the air. USA's Saturday Nightmares at 8 p.m. Eastern Saturday. Get all the tennis news, profiles, tips from the pros, and much more with Tennis Magazine Reports. At 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific, tomorrow. This week on USA's Sunday Showdown, Lee J. Cobb is the judge whose love for his daughter is threatened by a revenge-seeking former friend. What do you want? We both know what I want and what I'm going to get from you and why. I'm the Virginian. And on Lancer, Johnny meets his match in a deadly duel for possession of a wild stallion. I said nobody's taking that horse. USA is big enough for the two of them, the Virginian and Lancer, at 7 Eastern, Sunday. Coming up on USA Tonight, stay tuned for all the latest news, interviews, and videos on Radio 1990. Then at midnight Eastern, it's Tennis Magazine Reports. That's coming up tonight right here on USA. A little bit of a change in the final score at the Met Center. 7-5 is a final. The Edmonton Oilers defeat the Minnesota North Stars in a very exciting end-to-end -end game from the end of the first period on right through the end. Let's recap the scoring for you. It began with Wayne Gretzky in the third period, his sixth goal of the season, a hat trick, the 29th of his career, unassisted at 12-43, Oilers 5-4. Brian Bellows tied the score at five with his third of the season at 14-57, and then with only 48 seconds left, Glenn Anderson, a great individual effort, assisted by Willie Lindstrom, Anderson's third of the season at 19-12. And then the controversial goal, unassisted, Paul Coffey gets the goal when someone on the North Stars threw the stick at the puck that was going towards the open net. And at 20 minutes, Paul Coffey gets the Oilers' seventh goal. The mobile MVP of our game tonight, the hat trick, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne, you were all over that uh, stick throwing incident near the end of the game. Well, I just, you know, it's, uh, it's a rule in the National Hockey League. If the goaltender is pulled, it, uh, if a man throws a stick, it's a it's an automatic goal, and I, I believe that if the goalie's in that and he throws a stick, uh, I, I believe he can't end the game and there's a penalty shot. But uh, Paul, you know, it's a goal, and it's uh, something for him. I'm sure he uh, doesn't mind scoring the goal, and uh, that's the rules. Wayne, how did you feel uh, preparing for this season? A little bit different than seasons past? Yeah, it was. It's a big change for us. Uh, we didn't have to answer a lot of questions of what happened to the, the hockey club. And, you know, we're finding a little bit different playing uh, this season than in past years that, uh, you know, as you saw tonight, the crowd gets pretty excited, pretty emotional. And, you know, teams want to knock off the Stanley Cup champions, and we know we have to rise to the occasion every night. Um, can't say enough about uh, how well our goaltender played tonight. I thought he was outstanding, and uh, we hung in there, and he made the big saves, and... Uh, how many times have you seen Anderson score in the last couple of minutes and uh, just a big goal for us? It happens a lot. Why do you think there was such a difference between the first period and the second and third? Well, I think one thing that uh, their hockey club came out and really started taking the man. They didn't get caught two on ones and three on twos. They played very disciplined hockey very well. I think that uh, Keith Acton uh, got him going. He was all over the ice bumping people and uh, kind of uh, causing controversy out there. And 
uh, instead of worrying about our game and, and uh, doing what we do best, we start worrying about those things. And uh, we regrouped at the end of the second period and said that that's not us. And uh, we came out and played a pretty good third period. Wayne, we're going to get a chance now to look at your hat trick goal in the third period. It came at uh, night. At, I'm sorry, 12:43. You get open in the slot. This is a beautiful replay. Well, I just missed uh, about 30 seconds earlier uh, a shot from just the top of the slot on the uh, right-hand side. I just shot it wide, and uh, I picked the puck up in the middle and came through, and, and I saw all the people standing in front of the net, and, and uh, I just shot it towards the net, hoping it would go in. And, you know, it was a tough play for the goaltender. He had a lot of people in front of him, a lot of uh, guys screening, and, and uh, as I said, I just shot it at the net. Yeah, the goal you had earlier in the game when you had two players dragging you down to the ice was really interesting, too. You showed a lot of strength. Well, I don't know if it's strength. There's more, uh, more fear and then want to keep going and uh, not wanting to fall. I, uh, uh, I, I went to the net and, and uh, I knew that Neil was there and I knew that uh, I had to make my move and he was going uh, to try to uh, pull me down a little bit. Uh, I'm glad I got the shot away and I'm glad it wasn't a penalty. I didn't want another penalty shot. Wayne, I see uh, Glenn Sather had said some things. Uh, um, I heard him quoted as saying that he was a little concerned at how the Oilers would approach the season. And we touched on this a moment ago. Are you surprised at all of... Uh, how the team has responded though They're, they seem so strong as strong as they've ever been I think that uh, first of all our, our hockey club has uh, um, been open to a lot of criticism over the years that uh, we're o overconfident arrogant whatever words you want to use uh, I think it's a bad knock on our hockey club it's an unfair knock we just go out and we enjoy the game and we have fun and I think that uh, if you talk to the people who, who didn't believe that before and, and then played with us in the Canada Cup, saw that uh, we just go out and we enjoy the game an awful lot and we come every day to work hard and uh, we received that knock and it's been with us for a while and then when we won the Cup people said we were arrogant and cocky again and uh, I guess the word was team arrogance they used and we were going to get knocked off but you know it was July I remember 13th or 14th in Edmonton and it was about 95 degrees and, and uh, we had 15 of our hockey players uh, out skating and training and getting ready for the season and at that time I knew that we'd be ready for another year. Wayne, I saw an article you wrote in the Hockey News recently where you said it's becoming a little bit more difficult to maintain that even plane of, uh, of emotional feeling, and you, you snip at some uh, friends and relatives and so on and so forth. Is it getting even tougher now to, to handle everything that's happening for you? It's getting a little bit tougher. I think that uh, you know, the, the, the older I get, the more open to criticism I, I will be. Uh, you know, I have been uh, fortunate to have great people around me and, and guiding me the right way, my family and, and teammates and friends. And um, every time I get a little uh, down or a little disappointed, maybe a little heated, I, I uh, look and see and, and talk to a guy named Gordy Howe and how great and how well he's handled it for 50 years. And, and uh, uh, if he could do it, I just every time I, I want to snap, I think of him and it calms me down. <laughs> well, I, I always admire the way you have handled it. Number 66 on Pittsburgh, Gus Badali, a representative for the two of you. Mario Lemieux is the player I'm talking about. What do you think is going through his mind right now? He has perhaps more pressure than you ever did when you entered the league for the first time. Well, I, I, see, I know exactly what he's going through, and, and I uh, know what, how tough it is and how difficult it is for him and, and what the people expect out of him. And, you know, you talk about the fans uh, around the uh, National Hockey League and, and the other players around the National Hockey League and, of course, the management and the people, uh, the fans of Pittsburgh, how, how mentally tough it is on him, the pressure he has. But believe me, the, the toughest pressure that you have is from your own teammates and if his teammates leave him alone and just let him play hockey and and uh, guide him through and help him and remember he is only 18 years old I know he has the talent and the ability and he's going to be a very good hockey player yes or no Are you any better at tennis these days well uh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you that I'm getting worse uh, <laughs> I haven't improved believe me <laughs> all right Wayne keep practicing you'll get it Wayne Gretzky a hat trick tonight Oilers over Minnesota seven to five the Oilers remain undefeated on the season final comments will come your way as we continue live from the Met Center in Bloomington back in a moment on USA Which of these oils gives you the best engine protection under the toughest driving conditions, sub-zero cold or blazing heat? This one, Mobile One. Now, Mobile One and our other fine motor oils come in this easy pour resealable plastic container. Mobile Motor Oil. Now it's easier to use than ever. Louder than words. U.S. 
Crusades, college football, 84. Jennifer O'Neill has nothing to fear but fear itself. James Mason also stars in The Flower in His Mouth on the USA Movie at 8 p.m. Eastern, Monday. The Met Center is now empty, but the fans leaving in their mind a great, great hockey game here tonight. The final going to the Edmonton Oilers, 7-5. Oilers getting out on top 3-0, but then it was a dogfight because the North Stars came back in the second and third periods, and this was one wild hockey game. Elsewhere in the National Hockey League tonight, the Hartford Whalers, an encouraging win, 7-3 over the Detroit Red Wings. Meanwhile, an overtime final, the Montreal Canadiens battling back from a deficit with the L.A. Kings, 3-3 the final there. And how about this one? Philadelphia 13, the Vancouver Canucks 2. We will be in Philadelphia next week to take a look at Bobby Clark's Philadelphia Flyers. That will be at the Spectrum in Philadelphia when the Philadelphia Flyers take on the St. Louis Blues. That's next Thursday, beginning at 7.30 Eastern Time. Remember, through the rest of 1984, we'll be with you each and every Thursday on USA. Let's go back to the booth for Dan and Gary and their final comments. Gentlemen. Okay, Gary Green, I know now why Wayne Gretzky was chasing after the referee Dennis Morrell at the conclusion of the game. As Coffey had the puck, somebody threw a stick and they award the goal to Coffey in Edmonton, and that's why we had a 7-5 final instead of a 6-5. Not really a great move on the part of the Minnesota North Stars, Dan, because that affects your goals against average, and that's something that every team is working very hard to maintain, and that is a good solid goals against. But nevertheless, that's just a frustration that is taken out. You know you've got nothing to lose because there you see Coffey with an open net. And so as a result, I still haven't identified which player that was for the North Stars, but it doesn't really matter at this point. The score did end up 7-5. to five. What do you say to your team if you're Bill Mahoney and they get 47 shots on goal? They outshot Edmonton 47-34 to 34 and lose the game 7-5. Well, you really have to be extremely positive when you take a look at this game if you're the coach of the North Stars, and Bill Mahoney will be looking exactly from that point. I think that the North Stars, I, I think that everybody in this building felt they deserved to win tonight's hockey game. They played two good, strong, solid periods of hockey, the second and the third, but yet ended up losing the hockey game. The Edmonton Oilers just shows such tremendous confidence. It's almost, yeah, I think, Dan, you and I could feel it in the broadcast booth here, whereby you almost felt that the... Oilers are the defending Stanley Cup champions. They know how to win hockey games, and it was almost as if they were going to win this one. Somehow, they were going to find a way. I think that's something the New York Islanders, in their years when they always won Stanley Cups, people used to say they always find a way to win. That's something that the Oilers did tonight. Nothing that the, the Minnesota North Stars should be ashamed about, though. The winning goal by Glenn Anderson, just showing the great ability, the strength, the skating ability of Anderson. Uh, a great goal and a great individual effort to give them the winning goal. I think after that one, Glenn Sather will be happy that he did indeed sign <laughs> Glenn Anderson to a contract this year. There were some real problems in the, that regard. I don't think Anderson signed that contract until, in fact, just about the 1st of October, not too long before this season started. But anyway, Glenn Anderson, just a very talented, we call him a free-spirited hockey player. His teammates look at him that way, and Glenn Sather has said before that he accepts that in Glenn Anderson, that he can channel that enthusiasm, that free spirit, and utilize it in the Oilers system, and he's done that extremely well at one of them a hockey game tonight. Let's look at the winning goal scored by number nine, Glenn Anderson. It came at 19-12 of the third period, and it broke a 5-5 tie. When you're going to watch Anderson here, we've talked about his speed, but look at the way that he cuts into that net. Do you realize how difficult that is when you've got an opposing player ready to take a swat at you, ready to take a chop at you? How difficult that is, in fact, to be able to cut in towards Beaupre that way. He just has tremendous agility, great mobility. Meanwhile, in a losing cause, I was very impressed with the North Stars. So was I. I was a little bit concerned after that first period, but I think, as we had pointed out, that they were almost in awe of the Stanley Cup champions. And I think that once they got the jitters out of themselves after that first period of play, and Mahoney must have had some good talks with them during the dressing room break, that I think then coming out in the second period, they were a very determined team that were going to show the North or going to show the Oilers that the North Stars were in this league this year and that they were going to once again take a crack at them if they can get out of the Norris division. When it comes down that period of time, boy, that's we're talking April now. That's a long ways away, isn't it? Gary, when you look at this Edmonton team, defending Stanley Cup champions, where do you find a weakness? Is there a weakness? Is there a vulnerable part of this Edmonton team, in your opinion? I don't know. After that second and third period, I'd have to question defensively how well they can adapt to that pressure because the North Stars really 
fired some some good scoring opportunities at them it's not the first one that you have to worry about but it's when fear was getting the second and third shots on him which was fairly consistent in that second and third period so I would have to be a little bit concerned about that but on the other hand I mean they just have such tremendous talents both aggressively for checking wise they can control the play when they really have to they have shown that they don't really have a great number of weaknesses Dan and so I think that Wayne Gretzky in his conversations with Al tonight was was very correct when he said that they have probably had a bad rap at times and that they are a pretty mature hockey club right now and a bunch of determined guys and so I would I would probably say that we should expect them to be playing a fair length during playoffs again this year. I think you brought up a good point at one time in the third period you mentioned the great speed of the orders and probably the next fastest team in the league might be the Minnesota team so we saw two of the better skating teams tonight. Well it was sure an exciting hockey game I mean I would pay big money to see this game any day of the week over and over again because these two clubs when they go out there you have to sit back and realize at times when you're watching on television or when you're here in person as to how fast they really do move out there because it's just end to end action and that the great speed that is shown and the great abilities to pass the puck and move the play constantly ahead two exciting teams to watch. That's the thinking from upstairs Mr. Troutwig a very exciting game here in Minnesota I think. Oh, Dan, it's good to see you again. What about Don Beaupre in goal for Minnesota coming into tonight's game point nine six goals against average. He gave up seven tonight. All that happened to him was that he ran into the greatest scoring machine in the history of hockey. That's the story tonight. The Oilers go up 4-0 and 1. They lead the Smythe Division and the rest of the National Hockey League. Hope you enjoyed our coverage tonight. Thanks for joining us. The NHL on USA has been brought to you by Stroh's and Strolite, fire brewed for a smoother taste. Family brewed quality for over 200 years. By Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1984. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. By Mobile One, synthetic motor oil, you can't get better engine protection. And by Levi's, action slacks and action jeans. Next week, we'll be at the Spectrum in Philadelphia as the Flyers take on the St. Louis Blues. Game time is set for 7.30 Eastern time right here on USA. Until then, for Dan Kelly and Gary Green, I'm Al Troutwick. Good night from the Met Center in Bloomington. The executive producer for USA Sports is Jim Zrick. Tonight's game was produced by Mark D. Stolberger and directed by Larry Brown. USA Sports associate producer is Tim Rapley and our production coordinator, Barbara Travers. The National Hockey League is a presentation of USA Sports.